Welcome to the Sketch Zone podcast. Jack Casper, Jack. Hello, my friend. Hey, I'm Jack. I'm back. I'm the intro stealer. I'm the punches dealer because Thomas ain't here. <laughs> <laughs> I usually get job leads too, but it usually has something to do with a weed whacker or some dishes. <laughs> I live in Microsoft Excel. Did she say she does up? Yeah, she said Excel. She did We were busting on Photoshop Pro last week in Windows, so we got Excel. We got Excel, the actual market. So we got Windows. What other kind of software do you use? Quicken. Charlie say Quicken? I can't stand anyone on this podcast. <laughs> yeah. We're back. Welcome to the Sketch Zone Podcast. I'm Carlos Gomez. With us this week, we have, from Robot Envy and many other little creative endeavors, Dave Punk. Hello, all. Greetings. Wait a Thanks minute. Thanks for having me on this. Hang on one second. Charlie, what the hell? Oh, what? You want me to do it this week? Really, Charlie? <laughs> I, oh, oh, you kidding me right now? I, I literally didn't have it up. Like, I, I, You're close I, to I, getting I, a pink slip, I, Joe. I, 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 then he comes to do you want me to do it this week? Dude, 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 what? Man, dude, you have talent. Really can't you know what, Charlie? I got it. You go ahead and take the thing off. Like, oh, God. I can't hear you. I can't like stand it. you right now. Dave Pong! That is ridiculous. Charlie, show respect. Yeah, respect Thank you. Yes, Charlie. Wow. How are you doing, Dave? Doing great. How are you and all? With us, with us, as always, we have Charlie B. Williams the third. Hello, everyone. I'm back. How are you guys doing? Something on your face, Charlie. It's called amazing. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. It's half so man, half man. Yeah, yeah, there you right, go. Thanks, thanks for cricketing yeah. yourself. Yeah. I'm yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. called amazing. That's the first time. That's the first time in the history of this show. <laughs> so, if somebody cricketed himself. Had to get, it was too quick. At it's least he's not playing yeah. favorites. We know that he's yeah. legit. I am legit. You know. And Tyrus Gaucher. Hey. Oh, no sound. No sound. Oh, him. boy. It's he gonna always be, does that because he's going to be one of those shows. It's a, it's a slow build with Tyrus. So you always have to just say, hey, how's it going? I'm here. Dave, let me apologize in advance for these jokers. You uh, can't apologize enough for these guys. Make apologize for each week. Each week. Each and every week, it's an apology. You should be thanking us. Yeah. Hey, Charlie, thanking I agree you with for you ruining once. my show. Yeah, I, I agree with you for once. You hear? He said his show. See? See how this? Yeah. Thing is? So the truth comes out, huh? It is. It does. It does. It is. Someone has to pay the bills. That's right. Uh, D Mr. Dave Punk, what's going on, kid? Well, you know, just chilling out here, Chicago. Yeah. What are you doing yeah. in Chicago these days? Still eating uh, Harold's? Harold's? I only eat Harold's with you, dude. I don't eat Harold's with anybody else. Ooh. I got I to gotta come downtown, man. We got to make that happen again. Uh, I know. I had Harold's on Monday. But there's a lot of great chicken places now, man. There's like, what is it? I keep hearing about butter chicken. Yep. Ooh. Yeah, I haven't been there yet. Where's it at? We should go. It's over by WMS. Um, honey it's, honey uh, butter chicken. Yeah, honey butter chicken, yeah. There's some life-changing chicken out there for sure. So. Really? Uh, uh, I keep hearing about it, man. I... They got crazy hours too. Like they're only open for like three hours a day, yep. and there's a what? line outside. So you know where that hot dog place is, right? That closed yeah. down. Hot, hot dogs. Yeah. Yeah. Hot dogs. Hot dogs. Right. All right. Dogs, it's okay. literally is literally down the street, on the on the other main street of, from Hot Dogs. So for people who don't who are not familiar with Chicago, <laughs> for people Dude. who are not familiar with Chicago, like hot Charlie. dogs is like the greatest hot dog place in America. It's got to be in the top ten, if not kind the greatest. Never. He just um, opens it now every once in a while for like charity events and the people go crazy. Yeah, man, <laughs> but it's 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 great hot dogs and it's a great environment and it's nostalgic. It's wonderful. Yeah. But anyway, so it's right down the street from there. Um, and they only open like I don't know two three hours a day and everybody's lined up to go in there. So, um, Dave, yeah. we got to check it out. Let's go over there and find out if it's true. Yeah, let's do it. I'm down. 
So Dave, you do uh, you do 3D, you do concept work, uh, do character work. Where are you yeah, doing that yeah. these days? Um, well, my my day job is working for a studio called Dose Pictures, and so we do um, animation, we do visual effects, we do 3D design, uh, like concept art, kind of like whatever, photo retouching, anything that needs to be done, we can kind of do it. So um, we were just doing some actual bottle renderings, product renderings for Casa Noble Tequila, so um, that was kind of fun because we got to sample some of the uh, tequila for reference, purely. Yeah. <laughs> just to get a feel for the product. But yeah, I mean, you have, really, you, know, you have to know your product before you do all this stuff, especially when you're bottle renderings. The product there. Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember the product <laughs> I after you sample it? Well, it was pretty interesting because um, their bottle design wasn't completed while we were working on it, and so the closest thing they could um, give us for reference was a Patron bottle. So they're just like, buy some Patron and look at it. So we have all this tequila laying around, and we have to you know, make it disappear somehow. So um, it was pretty fun. Hmm. So awesome. you're at Dose, and you guys, you said that you were um, just a creative house. Yeah, we're a creative house. I mean, we're under the Abelson Taylor agency, and so we service a lot of the clients of the agency, but we also do external clients as well. So, um, yeah. And, uh, How long have you been there? I have been there going on, I think this is going to be my third year there. So it's pretty fun. The team's really talented, and everybody's really cool there, so it's... It's pretty fun. Is it big in there, Dave? Um, the agency is about 400 plus, but our team is seven. So. Oh wow! Yeah. Um, we do lots of different stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, with that being said, do you, then do you just hire on a lot of freelancers and stuff like that? Are you all? You guys are always looking at stuff. Um, depending on how much workload we have, like yeah, we bring in a lot of freelancers. We you know, we could we do a lot of stuff with what we got, but um, these days we're getting busier and busier, so we're always looking for freelancers, especially motion designers. <coughs> <coughs> hey, hey, yeah, Dave, I heard you had a bone to pick with me about what's, what's oh, the deal with it. What's the deal with motion design? No, Go ahead. I'm just busting your chops. I'm just like, man, I'm like, motion designers are hard to find in this town that are good. Well, what did so, I say about motion designers? What did I say? You were just busting Patrick's chops. And I was like, dude. Oh, he's oh okay, okay. He's okay. the one who's in demand. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So no, I just, no, no. I remember. I, just I told you that. So it's Pat, cool. Patrick knows I totally respect him. I just give yeah, him a hard yeah. time. No, I, got no, I got no qualms with motion designers. I definitely consider them really, really uh, talented artists because it's not one form of media. It's usually several combined into one. Yeah, for and sure. uh, for the purpose of um, selling one idea or giving one idea, which is, you know, that's probably the hardest to do out yeah. of all the mediums. Like, you could be a 3D artist and just do 3D. Or yeah. you could be a 2D artist and just do 2D. But a motion artist has to animate and sometimes model, sometimes composite, all the time composite, and pull it together and tell one story really quickly in a limited amount of time. So you don't even get to make a full movie. You just have 15, 30 seconds, sometimes a minute. Oh, I have yeah. no problem with motion designers at all. 100% yeah, legit. They're kind Except of for like Patrick. Their new job, so. Except for Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> Except for Patrick. <laughs> that guy, cool. listen, if you're thinking about hiring somebody, don't hire him. <laughs> <laughs> he's good. We're trying to get him in, but he's always booked. So. Yeah, I know. No, he's so messing busy. around. But no, he was, he was, uh, Dave was commenting because Dave was at the uh, Half Rest event that I was at a couple of weeks ago. And yeah. Dave was commenting on because he listens to the show and he's commenting on the great uh, conversation he was having about the different roles and stuff like that. And Dave was like, yeah, I was sitting there listening to Tyrus and Patrick and I wanted to jump in. <laughs> you know, it was fun. <laughs> so it was good. So it was always, yeah. always good discussions. So Dave, how did you, you get your start in the creative field? Um, it was a total fluke. So um, way back, like, in the day, like, I graduated high school. And I'm, I won't give you the date. Summer of 62. Fourth year. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 93 years old. Was that the uh, same year you got that six string from the five and dime? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Back at, in Woolworths at the dime store. So, Comic books were um, five cents back then. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, I was going to, I graduated high school and I was going to college at DuPage and I was going to transfer to Columbia at the time. 
and there was a job posting at College of DuPage for like a video game artist, you know, so I was kind of like, okay, well, what's this all about? So I call it up, and, you know, they, they're like, oh, they're like, can you draw? Do you know how to use a computer? I'm like, yeah, I've done some computer art, but back then it was like, like deluxe paint or something, you know, it was pixel pushed and stuff, you know. Um, so I was, I went in there and I brought my traditional portfolio because there wasn't like computers back then, really. Um, and they're just like, well, do you want this job? Like, we're doing Sega Genesis games. And I'm like, okay, this sounds really cool. So I just kind of fell into it and um, that sort of started my video game career. Like, that's how I started doing that stuff. Um, and then. What was your first big break? That, well, probably... That would worked, be the first one, wouldn't it? Yeah. Well, <laughs> you're, you're free, yeah. That was kind of it. So I was working yeah. for a company called Brian A. Rice, Inc., and it was, like, in this old abandoned, like, um, grocery store up in, in Hinsdale. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> and our first game that I worked on was... Um, I think it was Home Alone for the Sega Genesis. I think that was the first <laughs> game that I worked on. Um, Terrible. So I was doing, like... So yeah. Long. Like backgrounds. What was that game? It was like you're a kid and you get to play with a bunch of sharp objects. Yeah, you basically run around and you escape the robbers and set traps or something like that. Uh, <laughs> but it's it's funny. I'm sure there's something on Google. I know there's not Google, but uh, YouTube. YouTube. Um, but yeah, that started that, and then that company closed, and then I I enjoyed doing the work, so I literally took out the phone book you know, that used to exist, the giant thing, and I looked under video games, and then there was, like, another company called New Effects in there. So I just picked up the phone and called them, and I was like, hey, do you guys need any artists? And they're like, yeah, actually, we do. And so I went went to New Effects. They were in Hoffman Estates at the time. Mm-hmm. And, um... What year was this? Yeah, what this, years? Were we there together? Did I know this, you then? No, this was, like, nine... This was, like, 93 or something. Oh, I wasn't even born in. Right, yeah, exactly. About. <laughs> um, yeah, so it was funny, and so I just kind of walked in there, and at that time I had like a three and a half dry or three and a half floppy, and kind of put oh. some heart on it. Wow! And we looked at it, and they're like, <laughs> <laughs> "Yeah, dude, those were yeah, the days. Those were the days." My portfolio on a three and a half floppy disk, and so they're like, "Oh, cool! Like, all right, well, do you want to work here?" So I'm like, "All right, you know." So I started working there and worked on um, some EA franchises like EA Live. Or no, NBA Live 90, 95, 96. Nice. Some SNES stuff, um, some PGA Tour stuff, and some EA things. And, um, you know, after I did that for a couple of years, I was just kind of wasn't satisfied with that. Like, I saw, like, the PlayStation was coming out and more 3D stuff, and I was getting really interested in that. And I went to, um, actually, New Effects sent us, like, a group of us. Um, to the 3D Design Conference, which was in San Jose, but that used to be like a magazine back in the day. It was kind of like the beginning of 3D. Wow. And that's where I came across, um, like, Alex Alvarez from Nomen was there doing Maya stuff, you know, and I saw that, and, like, in fact, the other guys on my team, I think it was um, Mark Brinkley and Joel Dang and a couple others, and we just saw it, and we were just like, our faces just melted. We're like, we have to do this stuff. Like, this is the future, you know. And so shortly after that, like, I moved out to California and um, kind of pursued that whole thing and, and kind of went to Nomen. So. Yeah, how long were you in California at this point? Because you just kind of left. You um, to, I was there from, on. let's see, I was there from, like, 98 to 2005. So, so you pretty much said, I'm, I need to go... I need to go get some training, and you left left the game industry for a little bit, and and then went out to Nomen, right? So you were yeah. there for the early stages of Nomen there. Yeah, right? exactly. Like, like they, when I got there, they were open for about five years, and it was um, yeah. it was pretty cool because it was still like not as big as they are now, and it, they were just starting, so the it was really laid back, and everybody was like your best friend, you know, and it's like you could hang out with everybody, and your teachers were all cool, and and it was just. And they're still all cool, but it, the vibe, I think, is a little different. They're just a lot bigger now and a lot more popular. Mm-hmm. But back then, it was just kind of like hanging out with people and learning cool shit, you know? Wow. And then while you were in California, did you find work out here, or did you just come out for school? Um, I originally came out for school, you know, so I just basically took out some loans and went to school, and I was lab tech in there at Noman and kind of started freelancing with Noman too, and... Um, 
I actually worked as like kind of their art director, web designer, print designer, like in-house art artist, I guess. Mm -hmm. And so I was doing that for a while there too, and and that's kind of when um, so Noman Online was starting up, and Noman Workshop was sort of starting up, and so I was kind of working on that with Alex, like literally at his house. Like I would go to his house and be like figuring out like, all right, how do we put this DVD together? How do we do this training and like what's the design going to look like and all this stuff. And so that was kind of, oh, I was wow. freelancing working on that, but designing like the first, second, and third generations of the Nomen Workshop DVDs pretty much all myself and like putting all the content together and, and the website and everything. So, hey, let, me ask you a, let me ask you a side note question because you might have the answer to this. So Nomen's video and their video library is still, they have never changed their prices for probably like the last seven, eight years, right? So they're still... Fifty nine ninety nine per DVD, and the membership is pretty expensive. What what's the you, you know what's the thought behind never changing that? When you think about things like digital tutors, all those other companies that compete, just I you know it's I mean I can't really speak to the pricing and why they do it, but I mean I know that they're switched these kind of switched over to like the whole membership thing where you have access to everything right. first, like yeah. buying a DVD. I think they still sell them, but I think most of it is just like hey. It's archived, pay, pay this amount and you um, you get all all the content, you know. And yeah. so, I mean, like yourself, you like with digital tutors, you know, there's these places popping up all over the place, and you can learn how to do anything. And in fact, uh, to me, that's kind of like the future of creative learning is doing that type of stuff. But yeah, yeah, um, yeah. On a on a somewhat of weird related and and. This might not even be the spot for this, but whatever. You guys talking about price increases and and how uh, it doesn't make sense. Like, did you guys see that <laughs> that there was this oh, company gonna, that oh. bought the rights to the AIDS pill and the price went from thirteen dollars and fifty cents a piece to seven hundred dollars, seven hundred and fifty dollars a piece. That's insane. Do you know? You know? You know they change. You know he changed the price because of the backlash, right? Oh, yeah. did they? Yeah. 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 I mean, it was. It was. That was it's terrible marketing for his company. Charlie, <laughs> Charlie, you were. Charlie, you were defending him, right? You were like, no, oh, I I did, I, no, I did not defend him. <laughs> and I, I, I posted the link and started the conversation. I didn't. I don't. I didn't defend him. Oh, you weren't defending him, dude. I. No. I no, can defend them to a certain extent. Like, I get it. If you're going to raise the price on something, let's say, to segue back into schooling, let's say you, you sign up to go to school, and then they do this price increase. I could see if they're going to take that money and reinvest and buy, like, better computers or, or um, film equipment or something like that. It makes it a little bit more manageable, but everyone knows a corporation's job is to to make money. Make money, yeah. So they're going to raise the price, and chances are that the CEO is going to have a real nice bonus. Yeah, uh, yeah. I still don't <laughs> see. I still don't see the justification for what he did. Like I, I get making a profit. You know, I'm all about capitalism. But this goes beyond that. This is I'm going to take advantage of people who don't have any other options. And to say, oh, well, we're doing this to help create a com uh, competitive market for this drug. It's crazy. No, you're not. Because in yeah. one breath, you're saying, well, look, we only made $5 million last year in revenue, which, okay, now that's what he admits to making. But he said, we only made $5 million in revenue. So we did this because we think we should be making more revenue. But we're trying to also create uh, competition. What are you talking about? Why would you create? If you're saying $5 million isn't enough, why would you say we want to help create competition? Or we want to make a better drug. It's it's all BS. Well, wasn't he saying it's creating competition? Because basically, once those things are like uh, that pill is too high, then all the generic brands will come up, and that would then that would then. So how would that help him? His job is. To, how would that help him though? His job is, well, is then, to make. Well, because then he said they would then turn around and they would make uh, a different version, and so they can eventually push that pill out, which probably would then start. To start yeah, but that doesn't make any sense. Again. That, yeah. that doesn't make any sense. You're going to lose money so you can make more money later. That doesn't make any sense. Or you're going to charge, you're going to raise it 5,000 times what the price is. But I, I don't think they're losing any money on the, on the, on the, 
on they the would lose money. Thing. What I'm saying in the future is they would lose money if, if what he's yeah. saying is true, that you're creating competition. That would mean you would lose money because right away, if you say you're selling a pill for 750 and Carlos creates a pill for 15 guess what everybody's going to do? Buy the $15 pill. But what if why he would you... creates a pill for 15 also? Because that's what, what happens also. But why would you change it from 13? What would be the point of that? Why would you change it from 13 to 750? Well, then no, just, I was going off what he was saying because then he was saying because that pill is very very old and hasn't been developed on in years. So then you would push eventually push that one out and then you would well, pay what for he yours, was, which then he can he drive it up. Is, he was going to take he was going to take the, the so they raised the price 5,500 percent. Mm -hmm. So they were going to take that 5,500 percent and reinvest into getting. Scientists research. to work yeah, on research. and yeah. research, and they're going to try to they're going to try to take that money and create a better drug to hopefully get rid of the AIDS virus and all that stuff. However, they'll never get rid of it. They'll we'll get, get rid, rid of the, the pill, money. Get rid of that pill, not the virus. Just to get rid of it. Just make a better pill because they said right. that no there, one was innovating on that pill. There's no profit in healthy people. Let, and there's no. So you, didn't have to, yeah. you don't have to <laughs> yeah. raise it to five thousand percent to make a better pill. Right. Like, all you do yeah. is fund Why the research. Not just, Right. Why don't we <laughs> baby steps? Why don't we baby steps? Right. Instead of yes, thirteen, yeah. fourteen dollars, why don't we just go say twenty-five dollars? Right. Which which would still be astronomical, but okay, it's, still, it's doable. Right. right. Because most of the people who are dealing with right. HIV and AIDS or whatever, right? They don't have a lot of money. They don't have seven hundred and fifty dollars if they don't have insurance to pay for the pill. These uh, churches or whatever who are helping pay for people who don't have it, they can't afford that. So even if all those things, which they aren't, let me be blatantly clear he's a liar right so let's just put that out there but even if he was telling the truth what would happen to the people even if he said well we want to make a better pill what happens to the people who need the pill now yeah that doesn't so make any what, sense well, that's when he put the band-aid on and right. saying that like and he was saying he gets, well, he still gets the pill yeah right. <laughs> we're still going to give the pill to people if you can't afford it <laughs> right. we'll just we'll give it to you for free. Give it to you for free you're lying well, this for seven hundred dollars yeah Exactly. Who's gonna pay? No, no, no! Somebody. I can afford the seven fifty. Give it. To me. And that's no, just, you know and that's the tagline. Like you know, you know the yeah. commercial for it would be like I don't know what it I don't know what the what it was called. Let's just say, uh, blah 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 pill. Hey, blah 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 pill. Seven hundred fifty dollars. At least you won't die. It's like per pill. Like they raise it that much per pill. Yeah, per pill. Yeah. Like yeah. yeah. So then the cost of it. The, the cost of it. Yeah, it cost a dollar to make, by the way. It cost yeah. a dollar to make. And he oh, came in saying, he came in saying, this is what he said, we weren't making enough money off the drugs. That's what his initial people, statement yeah, was. He said, he said, people who owned the drug before, they, under, they were just giving it away. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. So they're undervalued. Yeah, undervalued. Right. It. Yeah. So, so, yeah. so he, pull, he pulled Thanks. the whole slick biz, the slick businessman, you're going to come out and give some spill, and everybody's going to say, oh, okay, no, people aren't dumb. Wait a minute. You went. You said it cost a dollar to make the pill. You were selling it at thirteen, which means you're getting twelve times what it costs to make. All right, that's a lot. But then if you said like twenty-five dollars, that's okay. Now you're making twice as much. I'm cool with that. But you can't justify this other than to say you know, it, it's you like, realize that's you had everybody over a barrel and it's you could screw them. <laughs> that's right. That's all it is. You had everybody over a barrel. You could screw them. That's it. That's all that it is. There's you nothing more. You seem a little creepy too. Very, no, very. Like, little like, Eddie like, Monster. Like you. PR was like, guaranteed, don't go on TV. He's like, no, I got this. I'm, I'm Eddie on. Monster yeah. in the face, looking. I mean, like, I'm like, who is this dude? Who, who told this dude like he should be the spokesman? <laughs> you know, when somebody smiles, they look like they're not all there. That's what looks. That's what it looks like. No, he looked. He didn't look and like then, he wasn't all there. He looked evil. Yeah, evil. That's what well, evil. Yeah. And then it's just not even fair because he was talking about opening, uh, opening up the market and people who make generics. Like, you want to open up a market? Let's talk about how easy it is. You have a school that's outpricing people, and then you come back and you say, "Oh, okay, I got you. Here's SVS Learn. Here's uh, you Artsy. Here's all these other ones." There's people out there go yeah. getting an education. If if you want to have like astronomical prices on say schooling, uh, okay, here's the free market. Free market says here's the internet. We're gonna teach you how to draw and paint and all this stuff. You can get a free education on on YouTube. You won't get a certificate, but you can learn how to paint. Yep. Uh, as long as you go to the right people. <laughs> as, right. As long as you go to the right YouTube. Yeah. Internet is not filled with amazing amazing education. You have to like find it. I always like to preface that nowadays because people 
Yep. A lot of bad too. So. Dave, you have an interesting perspective because you you were at one time a creative art teacher. Um, have you seen and and now you're obviously a, a an art professional. Have you seen um, where a traditional school or even an online school do they make someone's portfolio? any better than someone who's on YouTube? Um, I think it definitely depends on the individual, for one, because there's there's just individuals I you know, or students that I've had where despite what the curriculum was, despite what the cool the the college was or wherever, like they found their way and they just have that personality just like I'm gonna go and rock this no matter what happens and they find their way. And then there's other ones who they just expect everything from the college to be like, hey, they're going to turn me into this rock star, but yeah. they don't invest themselves enough, you know. Or maybe it's just not even that that calling, you know. And mm -hmm. um, I think to me, like the future of some of this stuff is not going to these big colleges, you know, because it depends on who's teaching there their curriculum and how they teach this stuff because there's definitely differences in, in any school, right? There's difference between like whatever college DuPage and Harvard versus, you know, like um, say like Noman and like the AI schools. Like there's a difference in curriculum and teachers and everything. So mm -hmm. for me, like going to Noman, like that was like a totally different experience than going to say if in Columbia. Like that's, they're two different things. They're two different education models um, where one is just like here you have to take, you know, your, it's for an accredited four-year degree where you need to take your science or math, blah, 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 all that stuff. And no one's like a certificate thing. But here, this is what you need to, to do your, the job of a creative, whether you're doing concept art or 3D modeling or whatever. Like, these are the skills you need to know. And all it is is working on your art. Mm -hmm. And so in my particular case, like, that's what helped me. Um, and I think that's what helps students now. It's like if you could go online and you're dedicated enough to just watch videos and you're painting and drawing and modeling and sculpting every day, like like that's gonna help you. Like having your degree yeah. and like a curriculum that isn't there isn't gonna isn't gonna give you a job these days. Like there's far too much talent out there, you know? Yeah. Um so it's it's interesting. In fact I have um one of my uh coworkers, Chris Boyd, I'll just throw it out there, but like his his family, like, you know, he, he has daughters who are artists, and so they're kind of, one of them goes to college, and I think the other one made a decision to build a curriculum online using tutorials and different sites like um, Digital Tutors, SVS, and all this kind of stuff. And it's interesting because that, it's like, if your art is awesome after that and you're dedicated, like, is that more valuable than going to a school? Like, it just depends on the person. Some people want to go to a school and be immersed in the, um, the curriculum and be immersed in the, the whole social aspect and all that stuff. But it depends on the school. If you're going to Art Center, like, that place is, churns out machines. Like, those people are amazing that come out of there. But it's a hardcore program. It, and but it's like not everybody has that option to go and blow, whatever, 200 grand to go to that school. I'm not even sure what it is. But that stuff, obviously, education is expensive these days. So, yeah. but... You can learn the same things because, like, Scott Robertson has, like, all sorts of free videos. So does Feng, Feng Zhu, you know, and it's like you can watch their stuff and learn the things that he teaches in class. No, you're not, you know, smelling his sweat and, like, while you're working on it, but um, it's just... But no one wants it. to smell sweat anyway. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I know what Charlie does. So, so let's, no, talk no. About, let's talk about um, the job market in California versus the job market in Chicago. Hmm. Uh, uh, obviously, uh, Chicago is probably a lot more game-centric than it is no. film-centric. And then uh, now? LA is probably... No, I don't, I, I don't think so. No. I don't now? Know. There's like no. literally four, maybe yeah. three. There's game. not... Yes, yeah. there's literally like three or four, it's, I would it, say. There's like, if you include some of the smaller ones, there's Small six. Because like high voltage is still around. I mean, they've kind of outlived everybody, really. I, I include them um, in that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Then there's, you know, like Robomoto. There's um, WMS. There's... Um, WMS is a different industry, though. No, it's yeah. not. No, it's, it's not. It's a totally different than 
than no, than it's no, it's not. Charlie, yeah, no, it it's is. not. It's, it's not. It, it's you not the same artist. Gaming. Hold on, wait, up. listen, listen, listen. I'm gonna explain something to you. The same artists interchange. The ones who work for Midway are all over WMS. They're back and forth, back and forth. From from video game companies, people are coming from California. They all have video game backgrounds. It's not. They literally make video games now. Yeah, I mean, it's just a different type of game, but it's a game, and you make graphics for it. I know it's a game, but if you do broad terms, but okay. They run. Everything's running off Unity or off of uh, so what's the, the engine? Well, the comparison. Let's do it like this. Let's simplify. The comparison is film versus game. Mm -hmm. Uh. Is there a lot of film companies in Chicago now? No, I mean, there's production companies. I mean, Chicago is an advertising town. Like, it's advertising right. and marketing. Right. Like, that's right. what, what we have here. We have some game companies. We, I mean, a couple, I don't even know if film comes. The Wachowski brothers have their company, but it, that's it's not the market here, you know. So right. if you're wanting to go into games and be concept artists, like, it's it's there's not a huge pool here for that, to just do not that. Anything. Yeah. You know, if you want to do where you find work is if like a three D modeler, you're a motion designer, like you can do like three D, like in the freelance world, like you know that's where you you pick up the work. It's like working at the mill or you're working at um, Vitamin or Leviathan, and like because a freelancer. Mm -hmm. um, as far Optimus, as far as game, Optimus is still yeah, around, right? Yeah, no, Optimus is yeah for sure. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, there's a bunch of those little studios, um, mm -hmm. lots of marketing stuff, a lot of web content places, and, and that kind of stuff. Um, games, uh, you know, there's only a handful. So, so describe the describe the market in say L.A. Well, L.A. is kind of nice nice to have like Steve or DeCosta, not Steve DeCosta, but Steve talking about some of that from. Um, but I mean, obviously they have the film industry there. But I mean, that's even getting a little separated now with like overseas work. And I have friends there who are just like, man, where's all the work? And I'm like, wait, you're in the hub of where all the work should be. But they don't seem to be working. So obviously the market is changing there. Um, there's a lot of but still that's where everybody goes for concept art and animation and feature work because that's where they make movies. So yeah, um, I know that there's a lot of exporting of projects. So the folks that are in North America. Are usually the conceptors. They're usually uh, the people that do the setup work. And then once the setup, like the storyboards, uh, I know for a fact, 2D people, they get the storyboards done, and then they send those off to wherever it is that they that they end up going. Uh, and then the production work is done overseas. And then when they're done, it gets brought back, and then you know the revisions and all that stuff. So, a lot of the American, a lot of the American jobs are like the setup work, the concept work, uh, and then after that, obviously, like I said, it gets exported. Um, but, but as far as like the setup work and and uh, and that stuff, film companies are starting to move up to Canada. Uh, we have a buddy of ours, Josh Robinson. He's in Singapore. Um, how much of how much of film work versus game work do you think is in LA? Is it like a 50-50 split? Is there a lot more film work out there? Yeah, I I don't know. I I would say I know that there's big game companies there. It's it's <laughs> probably maybe like. Sixty forty, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of game companies out in, in California, but I know like Seattle's popping up a bunch now too, like Texas. You yeah, know, yeah, Austria, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, everything's Texas, changing. You know, everything's Texas has a bunch. Right. They actually right. have. Um, they opened up a couple uh, video game offices in Chicago from um, Texas, as a matter of yeah. fact. Um, so yeah. they have a lot down there. Yeah, like, they did, yeah, they did a really Zinga. good job down there. I think Zinga's Zinga's here now. Opening yeah. is, is here now too. They're so. out by. Uh, Who'd you say was here? I'm sorry. Who'd you Zynga? say was here? Zynga. Zynga. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. When I got this, the job I'm at now, when I was the week, the first week I got there, uh, second weekend, the, the one of the other devs left, um, left there and been there a while and, and went over to Zynga, you know. Uh, so yeah, because they were like starting to hire up programmers a lot. Yeah. So yeah, it's uh, you you get those sleeper ones that come in, so it's really it's really really nice. But like 
especially in the South, in the last, I would say, two two to three years, they've done a really good job with the subsidies and stuff like that. I don't know if it's still the, still just as good, but they've really crafted Austin in to be a really nice technology hub now. Um, also in Georgia, like Savannah and all that good stuff, uh, and um, right outside of Atlanta in that area, there's a lot of good companies that are getting really good Really there's good a buddy uh, of mine, traction too. Yeah. There's a buddy of mine in Austin, uh, whose name is Dallas. But <laughs> uh, he actually just started Dallas Dickinson. Big big shout out to him. He just started a video game company called QC Games. Hmm. Um, yeah. So Austin has a huge uh, technology yeah. or about them. I know there's some folks out there in Dallas named Austin. Not just kidding. Um, I know there's you know a lot of game else? companies in hey, Dallas. Charlie, I need you to get on the board, bro. You are lost <laughs> in the sauce right now. <laughs> what? <laughs> you know who else has um who has popped up a game company down 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 south? Is uh I don't know if they still have it there, but it was High Voltage. They have one in um oh, they in, have another uh, one? Uh, New Orleans that no one talks about, but I was I remember huh. reading last year on the New Orleans I think it's New Orleans. Yeah, I think it's a... Uh, uh, they might need yeah. someone to make some props, dude. You should go apply, man. No, I'm good, man. I'm good at that right now. <laughs> Dave's trying to get you out of town. <laughs> yeah, Dave was threatening. It's okay. It happens. I look way better than him, but it's okay. Um, so yeah, it's it's it's, it's very very interesting. There's another there's another uh, side to this this uh, talk we're having though is like how much uh, Canada has come up in the last couple years based on their incentives that they give studios that they want to build Canadian studios or bring studios to, to Canada, you know, mm -hmm. in like Vancouver and Toronto and um, and all those spots. They just open up, EA just opened up a new, a new studio uh, there <laughs> in accordance with Jade Raymond, you know, the, the That'd be closer producer. Year, so. <laughs> You're so silly. In accordance with like the, you know, she used to do Assassin's Creed. Well, it's EA, man. That's what they do. Yeah. But no, I think that's with the Star Wars stuff that they're working on. So oh, well, that that might keep it. them open. Yeah, yeah, I think it would. That and then like the other <laughs> executive producer from Naughty Dog is also working and directing that game also. Um, oh, yeah. I forget her name too, but it's like a it's a tag team up there. Yeah, so, stuff is popping up everywhere, and like so are the opportunities. Like um, I don't know if you if you know Lashawn Thomas, like he's yeah. an artist, yeah. animation artist, and stuff. Like he did that Kickstarter for his Cannon Busters thing, mm -hmm. and then so awesome. with yeah. that money, like, he talked to Thomas Romain, who is over at Satellite in Japan, who uh -huh. um, works with Shoji Kawamori, and yeah. um, and so, like, they're working together on this whole cartoon with this animation awesome. production wow. company in Japan. Actually, I've been on board. Nice. And so, and it's, and it's just cool, like, they just contact each other, and, like, uh, Thomas Romain, he's from France working in Japan, so it's like... Yeah. There's like this shift of talent, you know, and I think LaShawn's even done some time or still living in like yeah, that's one, Korea one my, or something. Yeah, it's one of my um, favorite. Yeah. I think it's Japan. It was one of my favorite Kickstarter videos. Do you remember that video when we first saw that Tyrus? Yeah, um, um, where it showed him like over in Japan and it's it just like really well, well done and well made. If you haven't seen the Cannon Buster stuff, go see it. I think they even got Joe Mad to help out a little bit it too, also. So yeah, I think he was. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Yeah. Speaking of Kickstarter. Uh oh. <laughs> Segway, Dave. Have you ever heard of Kickstarter? Uh, yeah, I think I I might have came across it once or twice in my career. Would you Would you ever be interested in doing a Kickstarter ever? <sighs> maybe. Actually, I'm in the middle of one. Not in the middle of one. Well, maybe in the middle of one. Right now, so. Yeah, oh no way! Can you tell yeah, us about it? Yeah, this is Robot Envy Zenith. <laughs> Like robot envy little, zenith, mm, mm, little sound effect or something? No, no robot sound effect. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I like your words. <laughs> Do it, grunt again. Really? Come on, Charlie. Do a little dance. I know you're. That's one of the things you're good at. You ask me to dance? Yeah, yeah dance, monkey. Yes. <laughs> you do it at EA all the time. <laughs> Is the dance for him at EA all the no, time? Yeah, yeah, you do. You yeah, yeah, some of this guy, man. Dude, it's crazy. Don't, don't let a... <laughs> don't you remember the time you were taking your pants off in the stairwell and, like, doing... Oh! Oh! <laughs> 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 
Oh, oh, okay. Oh, is old, man. The boy, where did it go? go? Where did this conversation go? This went. <laughs> right. Were you working on props, Charlie? <laughs> are you, are you working on props? Uh, you wish you were working on props. <laughs> Shut up, props. Oh. Yeah, we we're trying to make him model a sphere by hand. <laughs> <laughs> have trouble with it. They told Charlie, "Box model a spear, a spear." I'm like, dude, you know there's a box button that makes a spear. Polly by Polly. Uh, perfect. <laughs> Shut up. Yeah, so, so this Kickstarter, it's called Robot NV Zenith. So um, it began as a my first Kickstarter in 2012, and so that was like a little sketchbook project, package design thing, and it kind of. It's actually this little booklet here, and it's got, um, I don't know, it was just a collection of, like, some sketches and stuff that I did, and just some fun little things. And then over time, like, I I didn't know what to do after that first uh, Kickstarter. Um, so it was funded. I printed the book. It was pretty cool, and uh, quite an experience doing that, because Kickstarters kind of take a lot of time. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we just started, like, featuring different artists on the website, and like on Facebook every week, so I had a couple of students, Quentin, which is one, just find artists and like contact them and like we kind of build a, like a, a relationship with them and just kind of, you know, they're all, all just a bunch of cool dudes drawing stuff or, you know, men, women drawing things. And uh, so fast forward like three years, we have, I don't know, like almost 9,000 people on Facebook who like us and we feature robot Ooh. artists from all over the world every week. And, uh, you know, we just had... You know, Jake Parker was on it. Um, Steve Talkowski, many more. DeCosta was on there too. Those those guys all jerks. Yeah, I know. (laughs) Every last one of them. I mean, (laughs) jeez. And that that brought us to Zenith, which is the latest one. So we're collecting um, over 60 artists in the one hardbound art book volume. That's just uh, it's pretty awesome. So we're wrapping up the book right now. I'm going to send it to the printers next week, and. yeah, and it's it's been it's been fun. It's a lot of work, but it's been fun. So you guys just decided, how do we make this bigger? And yeah, then you know, it was it started out just being me, and it, but there's just so many awesome artists out there, and I just felt that there wasn't like a really nice art book of robots. Like there is all these other things and all these other concept art books and stuff, but not one that kind of captures like all media, like sculptors and. Mm-hmm. Um, illustrators, concept artists, and, you know, just all walks of life, not just, like, one specific genre of artist. And I think that's what we tried to capture is just we have a lot of different stuff in the book, and it's really nicely curated, and uh, and we just well, wanted to share that, you know. What were, the, what were the names for the first two? So if anybody's interested in looking them up. Uh, so Robot Envy, the first one, that doesn't really have a name. The second mm-hmm. one is Robot Envy Reconstruction, and so this was kind of an all-digital project that I did, I think, two years oh, ago. Yes. Mm-hmm. And um, it's just more robots and just, like, kind of sketches and just sort of a different process than what I did before. Um, it was just more like a learning exercise, and I decided to throw it into a book, and that one was not Kickstarted. I just kind of used the money from the first Kickstarter to use that to make the second mm-hmm. one. So I think, you know, Dave, you're really downplaying how awesome this is. Um, like, people really love it. Everybody, you know, like, look, who doesn't, on, like, wildfire. Yeah, who doesn't just, like yeah, robots? My, I, You know, I, at the time, my daughter was probably two or three, and I had ordered the book. I did the Kickstarter. I'm like, oh, my God, Dave's doing a book. And she loved this book because it had robots in it. And she went. <laughs> She went to sleep with it, and, you know, we talk really? about the different robots. Yeah, she, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, it was a big deal. She loved that book, man. Like, kids no, like the awesome. book. Adults yeah. like the book. It's, it's got robots in it. So, you know, you make your own story. You look at the art, and you go, oh, this, this robot fires lights out of his chest, like the one with the, you know, it's like all the different robots. And you have a fan base because they love what you do. They love what you do. And so you're like laying back, like, oh, yeah. There's a lot no, of no, people, no, 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 you're right. people like it's, Dave. I'm you just know, that's when it I'm just in the mix of it, and so it's yeah. like yeah. you see the light at the end of the tunnel. The book is awesome. Like yeah. the artists are awesome. Like everything is really cool about it. It's just it's been a lot of work. That's all. I mean, yeah. like yeah. Steve is really in Steve Talkowski is really in the robots. There's a lot of people. The Costa, by the way, Steve Talkowski just, just like said, him. "I love you too, Tyrus." <laughs> 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 yeah, all of them are listening in, so they love they love they, they love the book, you know, and like 
I think we cut out a little bit of your uh, your 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 gaming career up up until now before you switched back, and I want to jump yeah. back into that. But because I do remember he was Dave's the guy. If you see like a making of, he's the guy with the the crazy desk, right? So like <laughs> back back in the day, Dave had his desk covered, and I think one of the things um, I wanted to, I wanted to mention was that like. I worked with Dave back when we were both at EA, but I was just a junior artist. So yeah. Dave was a senior artist, and then eventually he became the lead. So, like, Dave was Probably always a minion. Of, yes. That's what he used to say all the time. But Dave was one of those art art, uh, art leads where, like, they really pushed the art side. So, and I think that's where that's where I want, I want to uh, cue everybody into why he does all these art books and stuff like that, because... Even though he was drawing, one of the things they, they try to get us to do is they try to get everybody to be both 3D and both 2D. It all, didn't always work, but Dave always was drawing drawing in his sketchbooks, or we always were going to art stores and grabbing new stuff, or we were, like, taking special outings. I don't know if we should have been. We were taking special <laughs> outings to go do, like, life drawing classes in the middle of the day, <laughs> you know? And as a young well, artist, of, I was like, our tools cool. work. None of our tools wow. were, so we had to do things like play ping pong and go on outings. So. Yeah, yeah. So, like, I think it's just pushing the true art and, like, you know, having someone that liked art books and liked buying all these crazy expensive books at the cons and stuff like that. I think kind of you guys were kind of tapping into crazy. that, you know, and, like, um, with this with the Robots and Envy art books now, and I think people want that because, you know, they still churn them out, but and I don't think artists, just when I even when I was teaching, I don't think... Students are like into that as they used to be, like they should be, even though even though they do 3D and they and they do more digital stuff. I think more need to be into it because I remember that was all the rave back in school, like getting the next art book, getting the next art of whatever. You mm -hmm. know, I have like boxes and boxes of art books where you know parents have thought I probably was using that money for food. I was dropping <laughs> so much money on art books <laughs> back in the day. You know, yep. know Tires has a bunch of art books and stuff like that. And it used to Shit be a wall. thing of, right? <laughs> See all of this? <laughs> yeah. And it used to be a thing of like, did you catch, did you get that new Star Wars making of? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, oh, absolutely. So I sold yeah. out. I got the collector's yeah. edition. Like, no one does that. So then they you, you know why? The you know why though, Charlie? I, I used to hold that against them, but now because all of the art is online, people yeah. can Pinterest, look at that. There you yeah. go, Charlie. Ah. Oh, Lord. <laughs> you, can, you, can, you can build you can build digital folders that you can take everywhere yeah. with you, yeah. which yep. actually are more valuable. I like the you know I like old school, but I get hey I can go Google that. You don't have to go out and put my, right, my box right. and, and yeah, pull yeah. Out. Yeah. And and it's, it's hard to open. remember what's in what book too. That's another thing. It's like I saw this picture. I don't know. And then you have to go through all the books, and then you got to keep maintenance on the books. Like that. We, we, we had boxes. phases though too. We had phases of like we were using that website Delicious, where it was like all just oh, links. Oh yeah. So it was oh. cool. It was like oh, I can keep all my links. Oh. But then you had like a library of like of links, right? And you put it in and it pulls up the link. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It was a nightmare, yeah. but it was better than what we had. And now you have. Chrome and Pinterest and got all of these other things where you can organize your folders right within your browser so you don't need delicious anymore and uh, it's just a different world so I, I get why people don't go out and buy the books like they used to it's the old guys like us who are going out and buying the books you know it's yeah, the yeah. kids who just like, like the books. movie yeah, I just yeah. geeked out on the books you had on your on your on your art so if you go to art of of, of, of Dave Punk on Facebook he had some uh, Dave just recently took a trip. Over to where were you at, Dave? Japan, um, Tokyo. Japan, right? And he was, and he, and which is one of my bucket lists of things I want to do because I'm gonna, I would do the exact same thing you did, go to all the major like, you know, Akihabara districts, all the different things. But you had like five or six art books that I started geeking out over because you had them signed and everything too. Who did yeah, yeah. you interview over there? Yeah. Well, oddly enough, when I mentioned that Cannon Busters thing, like, we were talking with. Um, we we're trying to get Shoji Kawamori to like donate some stuff to Robot Envy or just be involved or just like post his art because depending on like if you're not familiar with him, like he is kind of like the god of mecha design in yeah. in Japan. So if you guys remember like Robotech mm -hmm. um, from back then, but he was like the mecha designer for that and he was even a mecha designer um, on Transformers. Like he designed I think the original Optimus Prime. Yeah. Yep. And now he's just like if you've seen a robot in anime, chances are he's probably it. touched yeah. it somehow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but just incredible when it comes to design. So um, we were trying to get them on Robot Envy, and so we just happened to go in Japan, and I kind of emailed um, 
Thomas, and I'm like, hey, can we just stop by the studio? I'm like, I have a book for you and some stuff because we did an interview with them, and I just wanted to like say thanks and give them some Robot Envy copies and stuff, but also see if I can meet them since I'm in Japan. But they were super <laughs> of course. <laughs> and um, and like everybody there was was so nice. Like we went to the studio, like we got to. They didn't let us take pictures, but it's just kind of like a regular production looking studio, and I met. Uh, um, a couple of the other guys there, and um, it was just, well, it's, it, it was overwhelming because it was just like, I can't believe that I'm even here. Like, it doesn't even make sense. Like, I email some, yeah. this company of, like, uh, respected artists, and somehow I find myself at their studio, like, talking with them. Like, yeah. Just, <laughs> so that was kind of mind-blowing there, but it was such a cool experience and, like, a once-in-a-lifetime kind of thing, and, uh, they were really cool. Like they, um, they signed my books for me and so cool. chatted yeah. with us. It was awesome. You know. So. I was going to ask you if if the Kickstarter and Robot Envy has affected your life at all. So besides hanging out with those guys, has it changed your life in like a daily sense at all, or even on social media? How has that affected your life? Um, yeah, it's it's affected it like. In a good way, for sure. You know, I, there's opportunities that have come out of that that I probably would have never seen before if I didn't do it. And, um, you know, just part of it is just coming up with ideas. So um, just my personal network of, you know, like my, my girlfriend Amy is like a huge part of Robot Envy, and a lot of ideas are actually hers that come into it. So, and just managing it on a day-to-day -day basis, like that Kickstarter thing is just, you can't just start a Kickstarter and just let it go, like, all right, we'll see you in 30 days or whatever, we'll talk to right. you later. Like, it's just yeah. a daily yeah. grind of yeah. posting yeah. and shoving it into people's faces, and that's, like, the one of the unattractive parts of it is just constantly putting it out there, you know? And so the people mm -hmm. who's in your closest network, like, say, you guys, you see it, like, every day, and you're just like, all right, shut up already, I know about this thing, <laughs> you know? But <laughs> for the rest of the world and the other people, like, if you're not... If you don't see that feed in the particular like three minutes, then you're on Facebook. You have no idea that it is it's, it's right. And there's like no, you have no idea. Like there's stuff that slips by all the time. I'm like, oh, there's a Kickstarter. Oh, this came out. Like, you know how it is. The, the content of the internet changes every second. Yeah, and that's one of the it's things to keep that, in though. mind. Right. That's one of the things to keep in mind when you're doing a Kickstarter is the people that do care about you are going to continuously see it. But what the hope is, is that they understand that you do have to push and you yep. do have to keep it out there. And hopefully they don't hold it against you. Like, yeah, we know you're trying to do this. That's cool. I'll just ignore it for now. And then, you know, in your little message, you'll be like, 13 days to go. And yeah. I would see that and I'd be like, well, at least in 14 days, you can shut the hell up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and cool. so... The trick of it, too, is, you know, anybody who's doing a Kickstarter, or most people are doing Kickstarters, yeah. it's not like their full-time job, so it's not like, hey, Robot Envy, I'm sitting around, like, doing robot <laughs> stuff all day, you know, like, I'm <laughs> just sitting here drawing. Even stuff, so. Um, so it's like burning the midnight oil, like, I'm up till midnight, yeah. 1 o'clock, every night, working on this thing, because, you know, I got paid to do this. Like, on Kickstarter, it's like, people pledged me $26,000 to make this project. So I got paid to do it, and that's my job to do it. Mm -hmm. It's just not nine to five like everybody. It's it's more like eight to one in the morning kind of thing. Um, so you know, and it's a lot of fun to work on, but it is a lot of work. You know, it's just you can't really minimize a Kickstarter project. There, they're just well, I want to get a project in. like what you have, so I can lose all the weight like you did, and <laughs> just work my life away. Well, losing the weight wasn't because of the work. <laughs> <laughs> But but Dave, we can well, we can also talk about which I think will will resonate with a lot of artists is like let's talk about that very first robot envy book, which is more of like a console book, sketchbook of yours, which is mainly totally you, right? And I remember like you, you know you asked me to come and we helped push that book at the con that that year, so like oh, yeah. so that you were able to sit there and draw and like you still interacted with people, but and I kind of helped just. Push the book because I don't know when to shut up at times. So I was like, perfect for That's that. That's why we call like, Charlie. We call Charlie the mouth. 
<laughs> pause. 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 That you was a pause. <laughs> Everything you say right now, Dave, you kind of messed me up here. No, but at, at times... That's why we call Charlie the mouth. Because Tyrus is loving all the... We call Charlie the mouth. We call Charlie the next we call next Charlie the episodes. <laughs> yeah. See, next 15 episodes, we'll hear that. But... <laughs> But anyway, what I'm saying is, uh, sorry, sorry, the, sorry, the mouth. What was your question? That's why I hate everyone on the podcast. Mercy uh, said, Mercy exactly said Charlie was dancing for him, taking his pants off in the hallway, and then he says, "Now he's the mouth. He's the mouth." Hit that button, Carlos. <laughs> anyway, I was just I was just saying the, the the progression, if you will, of like how you had to elevate each kick Kickstarter and be more and more involved than what you were before. You know. So, yeah, definitely. Like the first book was just like, oh, I drew some sketches, I put them in the book, bam, you know, and it was kind of done. But you know, to get the word out, obviously there's social networking involved. There's you know at cons, like. It's cons are hard work because you have to engage with people because it's like if you don't say anything to anybody, they just walk right past you. They don't care. Like they'll look at your stuff, oh, whatever. And part of your job is to like sell this thing to this person. They look at it and they're like, oh, what's this? And you need to make this compelling elevator pitch. It's like, oh, it's, you know, it's my book, a sketchbook. It started as a Kickstarter and blah, blah, blah. And you got like your five seconds to see if they're interested in listening to you or it's just them telling you to shut up and walk away and, and go spend their money somewhere else. So having Charlie there was great because like I do a lot of commissions too, so it's hard to draw and engage at the same time. So Charlie was there to like sell the books and I got to like have some relief and do some drawing and stuff. And then, um, you know, he was good. He was selling books and, you know, he's a talker. So that's. A skill, believe it or not, I think that's maybe the one skill Charlie does have. So. Ah, old man, you can start talking now. But um, <laughs> no, but he was, but he was great, and like yeah. that's definitely another aspect that had to be added to this whole Kickstarter thing. It's just getting the word out, talking to people, building these fan bases and these relationships with your fans to to make it be known, right? So I mean, otherwise, I would have never got the funding for this last book for it. Yeah. Do you suggest beginning artists do something like that? Like, this is my first book. Totally. I mean, yeah. I mean, like, my um, our stepson, Vince, like, we're getting him. He has an Instagram account. Like, he's drawing robots, and he's putting stuff out all the time. Um, he's Dark Vincent 7 on Instagram. And so, nice. in fact, for this past con, like, we had him put together a couple of his sketches in a little book. And he, we sat him at the, the table. He's 7. And he sold out of his books. He sold 200 in one day. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. Because, like, A, you, can, you can't resist a seven-year-old kid selling his book. But still, like, it was a cool book. And he was doing sketches, and it was five bucks and whatever. But it's like, hey, this <laughs> what kind of... You had a yeah, seven-year-old doing sketches money. at a Comic-Con? He, he <laughs> yeah, he was doing them. <laughs> That's he, awesome. He definitely was, like, out of the pub. He, he, already, he already charged him more than some. That's, he's on his way. Yeah, uh, and he was, he was awesome. Like, I mean... Just a selling machine, and um, but that helps build the like his career. Like if this is something that he chooses to do, like you know, say if he sticks with it by the time he's whatever, fifteen, twenty, like you have these artists now that start in high school, and by the time they're twenty-five, they have these huge followings, you know. Um, and then anything that you put out, people will spend money for at that point, hopefully. Uh. Did you meet all of your expectations with Facebook, or uh, sorry, Kickstarter? Um, was it everything you wanted it to be and more, or, or did was there maybe like a seed in your brain that said, "Man, it'd be really cool if this hits big and I can retire"? <laughs> I don't think, I don't think I ever, um, I never thought that. You know, there was, yeah. just, I'm like, it's a book of robots, like. <laughs> Who's gonna make a million dollars on a book of robots? Honestly, I mean, it'd be cool if it was. It would be me. cool. I didn't know what to think. I'm thinking. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm like, maybe it'll, maybe I'll get a hundred thousand dollars. I don't, I don't really know. But I, 
it's hard. You want to be positive and think, yeah, this is going to be awesome, but at the same time, I got to be realistic. It's like if I had like a following over, say, like another ten years, and you know, you have guys like Joe Mad who has his thing, and it's he's built up his career and his name and these projects where he's at that point where yeah. if he puts something out, like he will get that kind of return. Like mm-hmm. we've had three years, and like I don't have that that structure, so it's uh, you know whatever. Like I'm ecstatic that we got funded for it and I'm making this book, you know, and it's kind of a book that I, I love and it's one that I want to buy and I think everybody's going to really dig it, you know, so I, it's totally worth it. It's a lot of work, but it's it's worth it, you know. Here he goes minimizing it again, like, oh, yeah, it's just a little project. <laughs> David, it's not. Dave. It's, it's huge. It's David, huge that's right. It's huge, yeah. Pauls. So admit yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, oh, okay, it is. It's a ton Thank of work. You. Wrangling, like I've never seen you this humble in my life. Like, this is, what is going on? Is it, you know, that's a little shoebox project I'm working on. I captured a mouse. I'm going oh, to the this, gym. This was I don't worry one. about it. What Nobody cares. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm yeah, paying for everything with food stamps at this point. <laughs> no, luckily I have a real job. There's no way I can make money on this. Like, all the money is all for printing, like printing and like getting all the stuff made and shipping. It's probably going to kick our ass on it. That's the whole problem right. with this thing because we have, you know, 400 backers plus like people who are going to order it, and it, they're you know shipping anything to China or shipping something. It's all crazy, you know, and trying to cover yeah. all that stuff is random. So it's that's where it's going to go, you know. Cool. So I did a quick search for the most funded. Uh, the number one was a uh, Pebble Time. Number two oh. is the coolest cooler, which I should be yeah. receiving anytime I'm soon. Here we go. Here, That's we awesome. go. Here we go. Here we go. We're gonna get one of those. That's don't, pretty tight. Don't, I can't don't wait. Do I can't don't wait. Do I'm jealous. They're starting to show people opening their box of coolest cooler and stuff, and I'm just like, ah. Oh, so you gonna do an unboxing? I'm gonna do one too. <laughs> I, hey, I did an unboxing of my Cintiq. I made a video on everything, so I understand that world. <laughs> oh yeah, you finally got a, you finally got one. Yeah, yeah I did. So, yeah, so those are the two. Sure. Those are the top two. Uh, that thing better have Dave. some base. Looks like it has some. Needs some base in that cooler. <laughs> uh, uh, are you? Are you maybe just a little jealous of those? Just a little. Maybe. I am. I did. I did a Kickstarter back in the day, and I you it did? would have been. Oh yeah. <laughs> It sure would have been. It sure would have been cool to be like up on this list somewhere. <laughs> what? Is, what did you? What did you do a Kickstarter? Because if you did one, I probably gave to you. So what did you no, do? No, you didn't. No, you didn't. I was building a video game. You were making a video game. Oh yeah. yeah. What yeah. year was this? What year was this? <laughs> you don't know. Uh, 2010, I think it was. Oh, we were we were friends then. <laughs> Yeah, it's good looking out. Now. Good looking out, Biatch. Oh, where is it? He said you did a Kickstarter? Yeah. Oh, Tyrus. <laughs> Carlos, <laughs> first of all, if I knew you did a Kickstarter, you know this is true. If i known, I would have donated. You know that. You know that about me. You know, if I knew you did a Kickstarter, I'd be like, nobody, cool, nobody, nobody in this whole damn podcast believes that. Charlie, hold on, wait. Charlie, Charlie, seriously. Hold on, stop, stop. You would give me money. Thank you, thank you. I would absolutely. You know what I get? You know what I would get from Tyrus? (laughs) (laughs) That's not true. You're making me out. You're making me out to be this heartless guy who wouldn't help you. That is untrue. 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 It's not true. Hey, I gave, I gave, I gave to all three of Dave's Kickstarters. You did. (laughs) <laughs> only two. Only two. Yeah, there you go. Oh, well, yeah, two. He gave to three of yours and so no, he one. He gave to your three. He did three. Uh, he did me three because he two. bought a book at the con. Yep. He did. Yep. Yeah, when I saw him, I bought one and two. That's right. Yep. So I would never, Anthony Piper, him, anybody who I know, if you're doing something, I'm going to support it. Can That's we talk? It. Can we talk about that real quick? Have you Have you guys been keeping up with your league? Yeah, I uh, just talked to, I talked to him last night. I talked to him last okay. night. Yeah, so we didn't have him back on. I didn't. Yeah, I didn't happening. know because it seems like things are moving. I he's see other Atlanta. people making. I see yeah. other people making stuff. And yeah. I'm like, are we? Let me, the, let me give you an the, update. He gave me an update he, last night. Can and you, I told can him. You tell to talk about the update. 
Yeah, yeah, I'm just going to give you a brief update. I talked to him last night. Uh, so this is Anthony Piper. He's the owner of Tiro League. If you don't know about him, Google his work. Find yeah. it. Find his Kickstarter. Kickstarter's already done. Uh, but you can find him on Facebook if you Google uh, Tiro League, T-R-I-L-L, League. Um, check his workout. It's crazy. But he's in Atlanta. He left L.A. He's in Atlanta uh -huh. now. And he's doing his own thing. So he's he's uh, he left the animation studio he was at. Wow. And something Whoa. big is about to happen. So I don't know. It, it's big. Let, let me leave it there. It's something big's about to happen. It's Probably what we all would like. If you go if you go to yeah. his site and you go to all yeah. his Facebook posts and then you go to other people that are on his Facebook posts, there's like other artists like drawing characters, and I'm yeah. like drawing turnarounds and stuff like that. I'm like. I have a feeling that might be that might be, <laughs> that might be the lead into. And, and, he, and he keeps talking about how he changed his style for more of an animated style, and like and how that's helped him. And all. he's ah, oh, it's yeah, such a great yeah. story. It's going well. It's going well for him. So I talked to him last night. Told him I would you know send a shout out to him on the show. So yeah, if you if you are uh, if you don't know who he is, find him. If you if you do right. know, tell him what's up. You know, congratulate him. Keep an eye out on him. So something big is about to happen. And we'll talk about that at the end of the show, what it is. But yeah. <laughs> that's cool. But anyway, back to the point. Back to the point. Back to the Carlos, point. Let's talk I about knew you had a Kickstarter. I would have I would have supported you. Yeah. That's true. All right. Thank you. Uh, I'm here almost next, every please, week, right? Maybe the that. next one. I, I bug tested his Kickstarter this one too. That was inter that was an interesting uh, Oh yeah, process that's true. With, with iOS and stuff. That was an interesting process. Yeah. Are you showing off now, Charlie? Letting everybody know. No, no, I don't. Charlie, okay. Dude, Charlie, Charlie, don't Charlie has my amazing. back no matter what. That's pretty amazing. Uh, <laughs> so Robot Envy turned into kind of like a, a social art group, and you reached out to a lot of these really cool artists. You said Jake Parker. You said Steve and DaCosta and all these guys. Fred, uh, dropping names, friends of the podcast. Um. What are some of the other social art groups that you guys have seen out there and, and that you that that you guys think are cool that people should check out? All right. So we should, we should categorize these things cuz like why don't we talk about the 2D art group for those who are into concept design cuz then Dave you can chime in if you have some too. And then we move into the 3D ones. There's a lot, but let's just do a couple. Okay. So what are some of the ones you, you have in mind, uh, Carlos, based on Tyrus, Dave, based on what you guys like? You guys are 2D guys. You guys are, you uh, how, about, how about, Dave, you, you name one first. Uh, well, the one I could think of off the top of my head is Inktober, which is coming up. Cool. Jake Parker started Inktober. Look it up. Uh, uh, he talked about that. We're, I'm, I'm getting ready. Are you guys going to be participating in Inktober at all? Uh, we are, yeah. Some guys on my team, we're, we're going to be doing it, so um, we're going to be doing it here, too. Are you doing it? So, I got, I don't, I'm, I'm thinking about it. I got so much work, man. Oh, I couldn't, I don't. I can't even imagine trying to throw. I like to. Every year I say this is going to be the year, but I don't know if I could do it this year. I don't Come know. on, dude. Man up. Carlos. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. I'm on that. I promise, man, you dude, know, I promise you Jake. 15 minutes, man. Give it 15 minutes. I promise minutes. Jake. Jack and I were going back and forth on Twitter, and uh -huh. Jack said, "Are you going to do it?" I go, "I'll only do it if Jake Parker retweets me, retweets me." And then <laughs> oh. so he retweeted me, and he was like, "There." Like he did. <laughs> it was. <laughs> yeah, he 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 gave me a retweet just to shut me the hell up. <laughs> I'm going to have Jake Parker retweet the Jack come back to the show. <laughs> Next week, yeah. he'll show up. Jack will be there. back soon enough. He's stuck at work. In the trenches right now. Yeah. Uh, there was an, there's another 2D one that uh, that okay. I've actually participated in a couple times. It's called Sketch Dailies. They basically on Twitter they they name a topic and then you do like some concept art or you do whatever art piece and then you mm -hmm. you tweet it out there and eventually if. I'm not really sure how it works. I think they go through and they grab the images off of Twitter and then they put it on sketchdailies.com. That's cool. We should preference these. So Inktober, do they have a bona fide like, site that you go to and be part of a community? How do, how's the best yeah. effort to get into that one? Probably Inktober.com, I think. Oh, just a, um, and then, I don't know. I Twitter think thing, right? He does. There is a site for it. So. 
Okay. Uh, I think yeah, yeah, it's a site for it. He just actually he just released the rules, so it's a PDF. It's a video. Uh, I think mm -hmm. it's like a two-hour instruction how to what the options are. He just released it today. Really? Nice. Okay. Yeah, I just got the email. Uh, if you go to SBS Learn, you'll be able to find all of the information you need <clears throat> to participate and do it the right way. Sweet. Or you can go to Inktober.com. Yeah. Yeah, it's, we'll, yeah put the, exactly. we'll put the link on uh, on the show. Yeah, notes. all the yeah. all the information will be in the show notes. There's guys. there's you four rules. It. So speak of drawing an ink. First rule: don't talk about post Inktober. Post it on the blog and hashtag it with Inktober, and then repeat. Those are the rules. Wow, easy enough. Yeah. And then Sketch Dailies is that a Twitter thing? Yeah, Sketch Dailies. Okay. But then, so you submit artwork off of Twitter, but then they take it off of Twitter and then they put it on SketchDailies.com. Okay. Cool. Uh, let's see another another two D one. It's it's two D or three D. What does anyone else have a a a two D one? Uh, Harrison, you got one. Um, mine are primarily books, and there's the an art drop. I guess that's kind of one. Yeah, oh, yeah. art drop. Art drop. I guess you could say another, just that's another website. I guess. Right? Because you can talk about DeviantArt. Is, is it March, so, March yeah, of Robots? Yeah, yeah March, March of Robots, Robots is another another one. Um, what else? March of there? Robots is is like two D, three D. Yeah, it's kind of whatever. Yeah. Okay. Uh. Well, yeah. Anyway, any any really good three D ones? So there's there's a lot. There's, actually, there's a lot of good three D ones, but we'll just talk about a couple of them. So, and a lot of them are based around sites, but obviously if you're into game art and, and uh, design and all this stuff, you have Polycount. Polycount is a really old community. It's been around a long, long time, so it's polycount.com. They have a form. Their form is uh, really, really unique in that, like, there's a lot of 3D forms online, but Polycount has risen to the top as being uh, the best in terms of getting honest critiques and stuff like that. Sometimes some people say they might be too honest at times, but it's really good feedback, right? You know, if you post stuff up there and you don't get any response, it kind of response to how good your work is. But I've seen people, I've seen students and other just up and coming artists post stuff and not get any responses and then um, you know two, three years in they start posting stuff again and they're starting to get they start getting traction, they start giving responses and people start to want to invest in uh, giving them a comment, you know. Um, and you know you obviously it's a form so you wade through the, the knuckleheads, but it's a really good, really, really good community, right? So that's for game art design, you know, learning Learning, learning that craft real time, right? Then you have like one of Iris's favorites, which is ZBrush Central and ZBrush, right? Really great site, a lot of information on ZBrush and really really cool. Um, and, and throw in a uh, Pixelogic ZBrush too. Those are really good sites. Pixelogic ZBrush is great. Over mm -hmm. there's 20, 18,000 members there, so you can yeah, link together from ZBrush Central to Pixelogic. Yeah. So yeah. Pixelogic are, are we just are we talking awesome. sites? Or are we talking like Community driven. Yeah. I wanted to do. I wanted to do more community driven. Well, not, really, not, well, not, not really deviant forms, art. The... Not really deviant art, but more just like. Well, these ones I mentioned are have things, community like, behind them, things. right? Yeah. Yeah. These 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 ones I'm mentioning have like actual, like. Community they're all design. they're all on Facebook and they have community. So yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it, the ones Charlie mentioned, the ones we're talking about, you can find them on Facebook, which are separate from the actual sites. Where people are posting on Facebook and getting feedback, you're able to see things immediately. You talk to know you each know. other and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, there's also another one called uh, 10,000 Hours, which is started by uh, uh, Justin Gobi Fields, right? Um, yeah. This is a this is a piggyback off of one that the, our our uh, in our guest last week, Danny Williams, started, which was uh, called um, Lunch Crunch, right? Which was a really really big one. And then um, then he pulled that one back because it got it got too big. And I think he might be doing something else with it. We'll we'll have to wait and see. But then Justin jumped in and made a new one called Ten Thousand Hours, where that's a Facebook uh, one. So you can get into that one, search for through the Facebook groups. Really nice. A lot of same people post, but it's like a lot of artists are on there and they're posting every day. It's really really cool. And I just got into a new one. I got one more, but it's well, this probably won't one for Dave's interest too. Which is I just got because I listened to the Collective podcast with Ash Thorpe and um, mm -hmm. they had a uh, motion designer called Casey Hupke on this week and I just recently became a part of the uh, motion design Slack um, um, 
community, which uh, Slack is a persistent chat software that a lot of different companies use, that, so everybody on their team can like, it's like instant messenger for, for companies and stuff like that, but Slack is a really good company that uh, free software that you can, you can download and like uh, you can make channels and just have, it's like a one big, you know, chat. Um, so there's a big motion design one where they have all these different channels in it, 3D motion design, you can ask questions, After Effects, and it's all just a bunch of different motion designers. And you can go to, if you do hashtag motion design Slack in the Google, you can find the page, and you can sign up, and the only real, like, stipulation with it is that um, you, uh, you have to have some type of portfolio submission that has some type of 3D or motion, and, you know, you can't just sign up just to sign up, so... And then they'll, like, it might take a couple of days. It's been getting kind of a lot of traction since it's been on those podcasts, and now it's on ours. Um, but um, wait a little bit, and if you, and they, they, could, they could accept you. I've been in it. It's a great conversation. I even got to talk to Casey and all these other ones. So it's kind of cool um, talking about anything and everything, art and design and motion graphics. It's cool. Real quick, uh, shout out to Ladarius Livingston. He just tweeted me. He's busting out laughing. Because Tyra said, you had a Kickstarter? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Hey, anyway, back, back to our list. So there's, there, there's, there's a CG Cookie Society that's on Facebook. Mm. And, and that one is good if you're interested in um, learning, especially if you're at that place where you're trying to learn and get up to industry standards. They give free lessons every Wednesday. They announce what the lessons are going to be early in the day. They give you a link to a Gchat session just like this. And um, you can actually go in and learn that lesson for that week. Um, I can't. What's the artist's name? Van. Um, Charlie, uh, you know his Von, name. Van. Von, Von, right? Tim yeah. Von Ruden. Von, Tim, Tim Von, Von Ruden, Ruden. Yeah, really Von good Ruden. artist. Got some good stuff out there. Yeah, he's actually in Robot MV2, actually. So, oh, yeah. is it good? Yeah, yeah, that's good. He's he's the lead. CG Cookie lead artist over at CG Cookie. A little yeah. bit of a sponsor for us. With oh, that. yeah, they were sponsoring it too. Yeah. Oh, cool. Dave. So you're telling me a little bit book has him also? Yep. <laughs> yeah, my little it's just a little side thing he was doing real quick. Yeah, yeah, you know, just yeah. something, a little mouse in a box. Don't worry yeah. about it. Hey, some, of the, some of the some it's of great. the other ones that I wanted to touch on uh, real quick <clears throat> that are more kind of like small little competition type of things. Um, there's a le- eleven second club. dot com. That was really cool. Right? Every month oh, yeah. they come out with uh, with a top. Well, not a topic, but they have a sound file, they give you an MP3 and you animate to that. That's Mm -hmm. both uh, 2D and 3D. And I think Animation Mentor scooped that up and it's part of Animation Mentor now. Yeah, they kind of like like what Pixelati did with Zebra Central. Yeah. And then there was one. Go ahead. Did you guys see that um, there's that, it's like a conference, I guess, speaking of communities, but it's, I think Trojan Horse was a unicorn. Did you hear it? Yeah, that was that. Yeah. Yeah, it was it's like, in, yeah. like in Portugal or something like that, mm-hmm. and it's like crazy. Yeah, you could pay to go to the conference, but be online. Mm-hmm. You know, you pay for a ticket or pay. pay like pay it looks super day. cool. It looked really cool. Yeah, they had a rule that everybody had to talk to somebody if they were by themselves there. So like, it's like very, very community um, oriented. Of like, meet everybody there. And everybody should know each yeah. other. No one should just walk around and not know each other. You know. Yeah. You have guys like Ian McKegg there, and they'd have like these art contests or these art showdowns, and mm-hmm. somehow I heard he lost, which is crazy. Oh, but Justin, Justin was there also. Justin was <clears throat> there also. Justin yeah. still has the belt, and um, oh. Steve wants the belt. We sent Steve out to win the belt for our podcast. So Steve, don't come yeah. home without it. Wait, 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 yeah, Justin, so he better watch out because we've had we've had Steve on a leash, and we haven't fed him in like two months. Yeah, but that's at the Zebra. Sh- Summit though, isn't it? That's right. Not, yeah. That, yeah. That's, 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 that's like next summit. weekend, I think. That's the next I think it weekend. starts this week. Yeah. yeah. He was talking about going right now. Sport. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. No, it's next you know, week. I thought. Yeah, yeah we're, we're, just, go. we're just throwing it out there, saying yeah. that Steve better bring the yeah. belt home or else. Oh, oh you put all type of pressure <laughs> on him. <laughs> Steve, you better get your. There was, there's another little community that I found out about just this week that's pretty cool and it's really interesting their their approach to their whole social networking thing it's called loop de loop l o o p d as in dog e l o o p dot org loop de loop dot org and basically they give you a topic and then you create an animation 
but loops, and then it just keeps going. <laughs> it just keeps looping, hence the word loop to loop. Um, yeah, I thought it was a really cool. interesting approach uh, to really cool stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there's some fun stuff in there for sure. Yeah. Uh, so, and then, of course, there's also Sketch Zone. But no one brought that up. So, <laughs> y'all, y'all kind of dropped the ball on that one. Hey, I posted oh, that you're going to do it at the end, so it's okay. <laughs> so now that's the last thing they think. There's only so many times I could vote on Charlie Shield. <laughs> <laughs> the gift that just keeps on giving me. Oh <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. So last week we did this. Uh, last week we did this. Uh, we had this segment, and it it uh, it was pretty popular, and everyone wanted it for Dave. Uh -oh. so we're going to get professional with this. Ready? Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah. I'll see you guys next week. So, this or that. Are you ready? <laughs> All right. All right. Oh, we're bringing this back. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Iron Giant or Iron Man? Iron Giant. LeVar Burton on Star Trek or LeVar Burton in Reading Rainbow? <laughs> Reading Rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> R2-D2 or the robot from Lost in Space? Robot from Lost in Space. Wow. ZBrush or Mudbox? <laughs> Ooh. Mud box. Yeah. What? Yeah. What? This is I was, you know why? Because the text didn't make sense. Yeah. Whatever. Go on. I'll yeah, that. I want to. I want to hear. Yeah. You're, you're, there's no explanation that's going to be rational. So why get no, it? No, it's totally rational. If you're a professional and you've been around the block, then you know why. Mm -hmm. And I know why. This, I know you know why too. I have I have what? Why? Why? That's an awesome. That's an awesome answer. I have to hear this why. Okay, when you started using ZBrush, what what was your gripe? Um. The menus don't make sense. Uh, my answer was it wasn't it wasn't intuitive naturally. Exactly. Okay, naturally. That's my problem. Is that like I've picked that program up and down so many times in my career, and I still can't remember it. It's like if you don't stay on it all the time. You will forget how to use. No, it. that's not true. That Come is true. on, are you oh, kidding me? Yeah. Certain things. I, you know, I, I can see that. Yeah, that's true. That's but true. like mud Char box, Charlie vouching for you doesn't count. Charlie yeah, vouching for you doesn't count. Day. You in it every day. You in it every day. You into your pipe pipe party. It tires, does so not you discount. Know, you know, I'm not discounting what the program does or amazing. what you can do with it. It is an amazing program. It's phenomenal of what people are creating with it. It's just that. They like reinvented the wheel on the interface, and that's where I think, as a professional, you sort of fail at design. <laughs> Steve Talkowski's head is exploding as we like, speak. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, right. Like, what? What is going on right now? Everybody has to see right when they first started. Yeah. Shout, shout out to my boy Roland, who's out at Warner Brothers out in San Francisco, lead character artist. Do you hear this blasphemy? I just <laughs> you should ask Roland. Are you, are you kidding me right now? No, you should ask Roland how long it took him to pick same up the brush. <laughs> he had the same problem. And so, and so here's true. the excuse: like whenever you talk to someone, they're like, "Oh, well, it's designed to be fully customizable," and it's like, "No, it's because it's poor design is why you have to customize it to make it work the way that it should." Completely disagree, but let's continue, Carlos. Open the yeah. <laughs> Love All it. All right. Uh, Adidas or Nike? Mm, Nike. Christmas vacation or summer vacation? Summer vacation. Of course. And now that you're in, uh, well, you're obviously from Chicago, so Wiener Circle or Gene and Jude's? Oh. Oh, Gina Juice. Mm. Atta boy. That's why yep. I like you. Giordano's or Lou Malnati's? Ooh. Uh, Lou Malnati's. Yeah, son. Not really gonna lie. Said, you should have said one of those. Not gonna <laughs> lie. 
lose. I, I love Giordano's, but man, lose every it's, time you have lose is just. I I can top both of those. Paisanos. I can go Paisanos. Uh, can you get it, well, Charlie? Paisanos, yeah. You, you know the whole story of Chicago pizza, right? Since you both <laughs> live in the area, I'm assuming you know that everybody came from Uno, right? Yeah, yeah I said Uno. Giordano's, Melnati's, they all came from it. I said, Uno's is good. It gets a little bit on the greasy side, but it's good. Oh, stop talking. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah. What do you mean greasy Uno's side? is just about like cheese. If you want flavor, then you, you go. Uno's. Uno's. You can't, you can't yeah. that crust. Yeah. yeah. What about all Home right. Run In? What about Home Run In? Hold on. What about Home oh, Run In? Home Run In is good, up. too. No. Yeah. No. Dave, you don't like Home Run In? No. That's like, that's like what store bought pizza. Communist? It's what pizza? <laughs> store by. They, they're, they're, they're home run. No, I don't mean. Store. I don't mean from a store. I mean from the actual place. There's, the where place. is it at? <laughs> what? Oh, they, uh -oh. There's one. Have, there's one in like Arlington Heights or something. No, it's know. like it's no, like five. He knows it's these. Two, it's uh, it's two in um, it's one is on Ashland. The other one is on um, it's two downtown on the south side. Yeah. Of downtown, and um, there's some out in the suburbs. Home Run In is amazing. No. He's never had it, but he's thumbing it <laughs> no. down. He's thumbing it down. I've had, I've had that's, that's, all, that's all we need to say. He never had it, but he's like, it's like saying, oh, I had Frozen White Castles. It's terrible. No. What? Well, Frozen White Castles work in a pinch, though. Like, if you really oh. need the Mighty Whitey, they work. So. Dude, when I lived in Chicago, I used to walk from the train, and Friday nights, I would be, let's just say, completely intoxicated and right there on the corner of Addison and Kedzie mm -hmm. there's a there's a, a White Castle every Friday yep White Castle I'd be slamming I'm like sorry. 20 yep. White Castles down my throat as I'm walking you. home it's it's a ritual Nasty. with uh, ever I can't stand White Castle Ooh, I can't I can't you don't know what you. you're talking about dude. Shut my up. brother my brother you. What do you mean you don't like White Castles White Castles <laughs> Dumb. My brother gives me a gift certificate for White Castle every Christmas, and I have it. Your brother here. loves you. He does. It's right. Best Clearly, you have a great relationship. <laughs> <laughs> All right, last one: Kickstarter or Patreon? Ooh, Kickstarter. Different, though. Yeah, it's different, but it's very different. My allegiance is on Kickstarter. Indie so. or something. Go find me. Patreon's uh, interesting, uh, though. It's I, I want to look into it. So. Yeah. Uh, hey, Dave, do you use Pinterest at all? I do use Pinterest. Uh, would you awesome. ever would you ever consider calling yourself Mr. Pinterest? <laughs> Mr. Yeah. Pinterest. No, I, I would call myself Mr. Pinterest. Ah, <laughs> uh, beating the dead horse over here. Because because if you did call yourself Mr. See, this is called a transition, Charlie. Because if you did you call tell yourself me about Mr. Pinterest, you could you could be you could completely show. you could be completely <laughs> Uh, infringing on the copyright that Charlie has for Mr. Pinterest. Speaking of copyrights... I don't have oh. it. <laughs> no Charlie, I used you for a transition. My apologies. <laughs> speaking of... <laughs> speaking of copyrights... Good job. Uh, so, did you guys hear that... Um, well, the previous owner of the Happy Birthday song is a company by the name of Warner Chappelle Music, uh, which is a subsidiary subsidiary of Dave Warner Chappelle's music <laughs> of uh, Warner Music really? Group. Really, they just lost the copyright for the for Happy Birthday. How do you lose the copyright? The judge ruled against them. So, so was it awarded to somebody, or is it just public? Did it, it used public, to be there. So if this it used to be there, and they just took it away from them. They yeah, that's why you don't see it on TV get anymore. Get this. Let me let me finish setting up the the thing. But uh, Warner Music was making two million dollars a year off of this, off of licensing Happy Birthday, and for people to be like, "What? What's that?" Uh, if you watch TV shows or movies or whatever, you will never hear. Someone yep. sing "Happy Birthday" unless they give, unless they go through yeah, the channels and basically royalty, give royalty, money yeah, to royalty. Warner Music. How do they get but, it? That's so weird. But I guess if you have like money, that. you could do stupid things like buy "Happy of Birthday." Course. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. it's like they own the rights to it, just like any other song that's on a commercial. Like you have to pay a license fee to use it on a commercial. It doesn't matter whether it's Happy Birthday or like Michael Jackson or whatever. So yeah. Right, exactly. So they own no, it. Probably the main. <clears throat> well, if this... So the, in, in L.A. there was a, um, a federal court 
judge that ruled that the copyright on Happy Birthday song is invalid, mm -hmm. and if this ruling stands, it will go into public domain. Therefore, you'll be able to use it on TV shows, movies, and get this. If you were caught by Warner Brothers representation singing Happy Birthday in a restaurant, they could take you to court. But they never did that, though. No, they wouldn't. But that'd right. be like a PR nightmare. It's a it's a different than comic artists drawing Spider Man at a comic show sort of thing. Yeah, it's kind of turn a blind eye to it. Like, can you can you imagine how many, you know, Chuck E. Cheese or whatever, wherever you want to go, Game Works, wherever <laughs> they walk it up. Yeah. No, they don't. They don't sing. Why, they don't sing Happy Birthday songs right. in Chuck E. Cheese. That's why so when you go to a restaurant, they say Happy Happy Birthday, Happy Happy Birthday, Happy Birthday. Right, that's why they changed that. Or if you yeah. go to TGIFs and they come out and sing to you, or Cheese Factory, they come out and sing to you, they don't sing that happy birthday song. Right. They have they, their own yeah. little rhythm and they clap yeah. so that yeah, they won't I know, be I yeah. Do they do that at Home Run and Pizza, Tyrus? Oh, my gosh. I, you know what? I'll take you and we'll find out. And I'll cha it'll change your life, dude. By the it's way, my boy good. Ryan Brockmeyer chimed in and said there's nothing better than Pequod's. Pequod's nah, good. No, nah, I just went to Pequod's. You had Pequod's like last week. It, it's good. It's probably it's good. It's not. It's not you, good. You, know what's, you know what's not good? New York pizza. How about that? Yeah, let's talk about that car. <laughs> you know what's not good? Hey, Tyrus, did, did you post a video of a rat running down the street with New York? Yeah. <laughs> it's the only thing that'll eat it. Dude, yeah, a rat. Man, it's its own thing, man. Go cool. read the comments. They're amazing. I, I, I chimed in really quick, and Tyrus is right behind oh, me. I didn't even know you were war. <laughs> Oh, you know, they only have deep dish. You have no idea what you're talking about. We Our have 32 different Ryan. types of pizza in yeah. Chicago. Yeah. Wade Ryan By the was way, like, if you're. Like, Called it a casserole. Could you wait? It, hey, wait, way, mom, next time, next time, next time, anyone wants uh, an interesting pizza, go to Gino's East, and they have. When you order a pizza with sausage, they ask you, "Do you want us to crumble it?" If you say no, they put a patty of sausage on your pizza, and then they sprinkle well, some does that too. Yeah, Lou does that too. That's what yeah. that made, that's what made Lou famous. That the sausage patty. Lou's crusts. Who did it first? Fantastic. Charlie, 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 Charlie for once is correct. That is a fact. Yeah. I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of sausage. I don't like it. I don't like the crumble. Like that's a little too much for me. Yeah. It's kind of like but, yeah. It doesn't need to be crumbled. Crumble. I can't believe they have the patty because then you eat it. It's like yeah, it's like heavy. hamburger or something on top. Yeah, yeah it's too much. Charlie <laughs> can't get enough sausage. The mouth. The mouth. Uh. Oh, let's get back man. onto let's get back onto the topic of copyrights. Something else interesting that happened in copyright court. Uh, a patent or a, a copyright was mm -hmm. granted to the Batmobile. What do, what do you mean by that? Like to who? <laughs> to so have it before? Basically, no one no one can copy a Batmobile. Hmm. So it was free so, domain before. No, like okay. So when you create something. Um, people can use it. It's just kind of there. Um, however, I mean, there's there's really strange rules when it comes to copyright. That's why they have lawyers that that focus on copyright because the rules are they change all the time and they're kind of fuzzy. So basically, if you create something, it's yours, right? Mm -hmm. And if someone goes to copy it or use your idea in something, you could technically take them to court and say, this is my idea, um, and I want them to stop using it or pay royalties or whatever, however that goes. If, so with the Batmobile, yeah. If you create something but you want more leverage, then you go to... Uh, and you go to court or you, you file the legal paperwork for that copyright. Mm -hmm. So now, now that the copyright has been granted to the Batmobile, it's absolutely crystal clear no one can use the Batmobile in whatever movie or cartoon or whatever the case may be. So who so, owns it now? Makes sense. Uh, DC Comics? Mm, interesting. Interesting. Really, such a which which belongs to Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers has been in uh, 
in uh, copyright court all week. So there is a lot of right. copyright. There is that whole Creative Commons now too with the internet, the Creative yeah. Commons stuff. Yeah, where things or people can put stuff up and you can use it. For you can use it for or whatever. Yeah, and some artists have really took a hold of it, like you know, like Beeple is like really, really crazy where he just gives all that stuff away and puts it on their Creative Commons. But then he says you can use it for whatever. So like, it's, it's awesome. So now my question, once I started reading all this stuff, my question was, with all of these legal proceedings with copyrights and trademarks and all this good stuff, you always hear about uh, Apple and Samsung going back and forth in court, uh, and they're, they're constantly fighting about technology. And, no, we have that, and this is our trademark, and, no, we use that, and you have to pull that out of your phone, and... Samsung's phone looks exactly like the iPhone and vice versa and they're always they're literally in court all the time fighting for all these little things um, what do you guys think about all of these big huge corporations that have more money than they know what to do with um, and then they're basically controlling the way uh, technology and and therefore our future unfolds. Do you guys think it's fair for them to do that? Do you guys think it's okay because they have a lot of money and they have the vision to create our future? Well, it's definitely not fair, you know. <laughs> but like that's the thing about all the, the big business places and the one percenters, it's like they have all the power because they have all the money and they have putting the money in the people's pockets who they need to put it into to make their decisions, you know? Yeah, that's like, that's that's part of it. It's a huge social issue, you know. That's yeah. like part of the whole president candidacy is like the reason why. Yeah, we have talking to... about that, you know. I mean, it's it's like control of everything. You have like the giant people controlling what you're consuming. Yeah, everything from food, like food, to your phone. It's yeah, control it's, it's, what you see. Yeah, there's a lot of instances out there where. Let's say I come up with an idea, um, or even even better, uh, I've heard of a lot of musicians who have a certain sound, um, but maybe they're not quite as pretty as someone who just got done being signed by Warner Brothers or Sony Music or whomever, and then these big corporations go out and basically put a contract or they they have this band sign a contract for however many albums for however many years but then what they do is they sit on that act because they have a competing act that they've spent a little bit more money on so they're basically paying for you to shut up if you're in this band how do you guys what do you guys think about that like well most of the time and now, because the because the music industry did that so much, that most most of those bands, uh, you know, artists are getting smart, and most people are going independent now because you don't really need a major label in the music industry now. You, they, you don't really need them until you get to a point. Maybe you need them for distribution, but that can be argued with some of the numbers that some independent artists have put up, and they usually end up coming to you with a way better deal than what it what it would would be. Um, Say you came up in the '90s or something like that, and where the, where they had total control. So um, that's what I would say. That is, you know, and, mm, that's what yeah. I'm and actually, it kind of like paves the way for like lesser known independents to become, I guess, more mainstream because of it. Because there's plenty of mu- you know musicians or bands or whatever, even artists, where it's like they're doing their thing for so long, they get this following, and then. All of a sudden, like you know, a publisher or somebody's interested, and like, oh, like, look at these guys—they actually have a pretty good following. Like, what if we take them on and do whatever? And so, like, because of that, they have more opportunities out of it. But it's like they start out doing it themselves. It's not like they're trying to like schmooze with record labels anymore. Yeah. Like, it's almost need, like you, you have to have to. that first. Like, they, don't they, even they won't. They make you like garner a following. Well, they want to know what your Twitter numbers are. They want to know what your Instagram following numbers are, and like how many hits have the people seen on YouTube. That, like all that goes into it, and then now A and R stuff yeah. like that won't yeah, bring like, other people to the table. Even in the art yeah. world, I think yeah. um, the I forgot his name. The one guy who does Space Mullet. I don't know if you know. I think he's a he's a local guy. 
Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, he does a, a web comic, and he's been doing it for a while. But now, like Dark Horse is interested in it, and so mm -hmm. it's kind of like that's how you get picked up. Is like you start doing stuff, and you build that community and your following, and then it's like enough where a publisher would be like, oh well, if we 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 put out this book, somebody he's got this fans that will buy it, and they can make money yeah. off of it. You know, Daniel Warren Johnson. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, there you go. That guy. That guy. <laughs> well, as far as distribution, it's actually a really good comic, by the way, too. As far as distribution goes, that's kind of why iTunes, things like iTunes and YouTube, and even even SoundCloud, helps um, helps take the power away from the huge corporations. Um, but then the huge corporations also control the technology that goes behind your distribution. At what point? It, at what point is enough enough, or at what point is everyone going to feel comfortable uh, releasing control? Is it a good idea to just say screw it? I'll take the money, and you can you can dismantle the band. Well, yeah. I think that depends on like how they manage that negotiation. You know, that's yeah. part of it. Is like, do you want to negotiate? Like, here you can do whatever you want. And give me my million dollars, and you would do whatever. I don't care, like the whole American dream thing. Or you could be negotiate, like, hey, you could publish our first, whatever it is, however you want to spin it to see if you can make it work. If you want that control, but I mean, I don't know. It's kind of like the art world. It's like you give, you give them, you only give them so much rather than the whole the pie, you know. But so I, I don't know. everybody's different, you know. So it's kind of. Depends on what they want. If they want fame, then it's like, all right, give me my cash and I'll do. It. I'll be your monkey, you know. Mm -hmm. Versus, like, no, take a little bit of this and you could publish this part, but I want to retain the rights for it and all that kind of thing. So, yeah, well, yeah. And I think the internet. That smart. I think the internet like helps helps that. Like, I I mean, you can't you can't argue with a following, right? So even if you do digital art, if you do music or whatever, if you if you Pull yourself up by your own bootstraps and do it yourself, and put the work in. Like you can pretty much do what you want, and even if they those big corporations come to you, um, you you have leverage if you put the work in. I think that should be the overlying thing with, with all this. You know, it kind of with the internet being the way it is, it kind of is putting that power back into it. I mean, you still have to deal with them; they're not going to go away. You know, big corporations. I don't. Go away, I don't know but. if it's as simple as saying I put the work in, or you a person puts the work in. I think. It's a lot of factors that have to go into it because there are artists out there, like musicians, groups that have put the work in, and they still don't, they can't achieve success. So I think it's yeah. a little but bit of luck. All, all comes down to the numbers. You know, yeah. Just, yeah. And I think that's an interesting point when it, when you guys say it all comes down to the numbers and putting in the work and all that stuff. There's a lot of stories out there. I'm going to say for a lot of children's books illustrators because I I've been following a lot of those guys like the Will Terry's and stuff um where a lot of these big companies want you to do all the work as far as build up a following as far as we need you to prove yourself do a couple books and then once you once you get into the once you prove your viability then maybe we're gonna go ahead and scoop you up and then we'll we'll start investing in your property yeah what do you guys think about that yeah I, th I think it's it's sometimes you know it can be that could be a little backwards that's that whole like hard thing when you're dealing with the, the corporations because like why don't they have to prove themselves like you know why why don't you know especially if you have a good artist you know and you, you know you're good but I mean I guess that's why you have to have that leverage where you have the numbers behind you, you know, and you have the work and you, you put the time in. I know there's a lot of other factors, but you know, sometimes if you're at that meeting, that's what it comes down to. I'm, I'm not sure. You know, what do you, anybody else? What do you guys think? I was I was going to ask Dave when you were working on any one of your Robot Envy books, did you ever think of maybe putting together? Like a, a a sample, and then going to a publisher, and saying, "Hey, what do you think about my robot book?" Like, 
No, because like, um, like the whole crowdfunding thing was interesting, and I was like, well, let me try this. Let's see if I could get a community to pay for the book, you know, and I did. So it's like, with with that, it's like, um, you don't you don't need the big guys anymore. It's like now I make all the profits. I'm not splitting right. like a publisher, and even yeah. um, you know. Yeah. Mag Magnetic Press, who is going to be the publisher for Robot NV Zenith, um, I know Mike from back in the EA days, and it's kind of like I'm bringing all the money to it, so it's really a distribution type thing. Um, but still, yeah, you have the following, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, yeah I've got I mean, the following, and we just wanted to work together, and it's it's just a good all around deal for both of us, and you know, it's it's just how we roll. But um, you don't need it, like we don't need to. It's like, what's the point? I could go to some giant publisher, and they're going to be like, all right, we'll give you 20%. And, like, publishing is just not a place where you make money. Like, it's hard to make money in publishing. You know, you definitely have to have the right book and the right community and stuff. But something like this, it's like, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not going to be Ball or Dave because of Robot Envy Zenith. Like, it's going to pay for itself, and, you know, and it's just going to be a cool thing. Yeah, it's Oh, well, okay, wait, wait, hold on, hold on, let's, let's talk about this, let's talk about this, hold on, because we keep saying that. Well, the, the, the thing is, is that the way that you did it, Dave, because you own the property, right. and you didn't go to a publisher, in 20 years, or in 30 years, when you're a dead skeleton, your children can still profit off of your book. They can sell it, they would have the rights to it, and right. so that's the difference than going to a big corporation and saying, hey, will you do me this favor and launch it for me? When right. you die... <laughs> the royalty checks may come, but they're going to be a lot smaller, or your children may not have any royalty checks. Right, so that's but they'll a, own that's, it. Yeah, they will. They'll own it now because you did it the way you did it. And right. so you always said any day, any day you could become a millionaire because it's still your idea. Sure. If you go to a publisher, you will never become a millionaire because it's now their idea. Right. It's your idea, but they own it. So no matter what they do, if they make a commercial and they sell it, they're going to get probably 80% of whatever it makes, 85% of whatever it makes, and you'll get the raindrops that right. come off of it, right? Yeah, and, so, and the market's changed now. With the internet's changed everything where it's like yeah. you know, they can't offer you the same sort of exposure that you can build yourself, you know, right. over That's right. time. Yeah. So yeah. it's kind of, yeah. they had a, maybe I, immediately, but, like, the resources are there. Like, you can find markets for the stuff. I talked yeah. to a lady yesterday. I talked to a lady yesterday, and she was talking to me like, okay, so are you going to do your own book? I was like, yeah, I'm thinking about doing my own book. I kind of need a break from clients, whatever, right? And I'm talking to her, and I said, well, she says, well, here's what – she's a public publishing – I don't know what she does, but she says, well, I, I can help you. And I said, well, what do you do? She says, well, for $2,500, I will get you uh, a website. I already have a website. I'll get you a Facebook page. I already have that. I'll get you on a podcast. Hello. <laughs> like, and, and every, got one everything, of those. <laughs> everything should be listed. I'm like, I could do all of that myself. Why would I pay you $2,500? I could do well, all of that the myself. Thing is, I just there, are there are people that can't do any of that. Right. No, you're right. You're right. right. You're right. No, they can. They just don't know how or they, they don't have the time to put the energy in. Like, it, it's, it's as simple as, hey, listen, I got a book. I was wondering if I can come on your show and talk about it. You might have to ask that 40 times before you get two yeses, but it's as simple as doing that, really, yeah. right? Uh, same thing with Facebook. Same thing with you. You make a Facebook page just like you're doing, Dave. You have to work and build your audience. You have to post. Yeah. You have to go and connect with different people and have them Absolutely. post and have them. Be, it's the work that you're willing to put in. So it may be slow, but it's worth it versus yeah. somebody who says, okay, well, I have 20 connections who I can automatically link you to. But yeah. you lose so much doing it that way. It it actually, it's not worth it anymore to do it that way. It's not worth it to go through yeah. unless it's a big publishing house. Then it's different. That's yeah. different. But if yeah. it's a small publishing but house, it just it's takes not worth time. It. You have to yeah, put time into building your brand. You know? Yeah, that you put in. Is it look, at, look at games like even like mobile games, right? You have these small teams, like a couple guys, like making Angry Birds. You know. And it's, that was probably, I don't know, like their 20th game before it hit. But it's like right. they had to build that up, like over their kind of careers, making games and failing at it. And then and building up the people where it's like, hey, yeah. they finally had one that hits. And yeah. now look, it's like there's like Angry Birds Star Wars Breakfast Cereal. And stuff. Did you see the and movie? Like, Did you see the movie trailer, Dave, that came no. out? Well, there you go. So It looks really good. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. It's, it's, it's beautiful. Really it's probably one of the best 3D movies to come out in a while, Vision. Wow. <laughs> 
Yeah, it looks really good, and it looks funny. Like, uh, what is it? Who's who's in there from Key? Key Michael, Michael Key. Michael Key. Yeah, Key he's, Bell's in Bell. in it. He's, he's, he's doing the voice. Great. A bunch of bunch of good voice actors, or just actors that are doing the voice. We'll send you the link, dude. You guys were talking about your kids getting royalties and stuff. What's the story with the Marvel family? Their dad helped create a lot of the Marvel characters, and now they're just kind of like, hey, what about us? What happened? That's, that's just like one of those... I mean, it's kind of like a controversial topic in the comic community just because you have these certain individuals that created... You know, it's like Bob Kane, there's like Jack Kirby, there's, you know, all these artists that develop the characters we know and love today. So, But back then, it was there weren't, like, contracts and all these legalities like they are now. Like, they're making these comics, and they're getting paid, so it's technically work for hire for them. But there's no contracts back then. It's like a handshake, and that's just kind of what you did. But, you know, fast forward 50 years, and now Spider-Man is, like, you know, a million, multi-million dollar property among Batman and everything else. And, and those families are like, hey, well, I, my grandfather and my father developed that character, and they're knocking on Marvel's door. But... Like, that's, that's kind of, like, the crappy thing about it is, like, well, there's no paperwork. In the system, they're just like, hey, well, there's no paperwork, and that was 50 years ago, and he was getting a paycheck, so... And the paperwork starts sorry. off here, where, where, like, where we have the copyright for it. Right, and so whenever you do work for a company, that company owns it, and that's just the crap luck of it, you know? But that's why it's so important, like, if you're doing your own thing, like, it's your thing. Don't ever get rid of that property, you know. Because then it's like you right. own it. You could get the rights for it. So in case whatever, like you, if you're passionate about it, you stick to it, and maybe you get that break. Maybe somebody wants to publish it, and you make a million dollars off. It. And that's that's the next property that's big, you know. So I don't the know. one the one thing out of all the things you're talking about. So all of us are independent artists. Well, Charlie, you're not working on anything right now, but we're we're pretty much independent artists. You know. So we're gonna shield. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> <laughs> but the, 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 the one the one thing the one thing about that. the one thing about that is that it reminds you that it's actually better to risk going it on your own than to say okay I'll sell out just to make a couple bucks. It's actually the risk is greater <clears throat> in doing that than it is to say look I'll just ride this thing out and see what happens. And if nothing happens, it dies with me, or I give it to my child and let them push it. Um, and yeah, I I, I mean. I don't know. I don't know if you give, like, I, this happened to me this week. One of the books that I illustrated for is doing really, really well. Number one in this category on Amazon and all of these things, right? When it first came out and I saw I saw the, the writer, uh, she's selling the book and she's at this conference and I, and I saw her standing and I go, I did all of the work. She did nothing. I did all of the work. And she's making all of the money from my work and standing like, yeah, this is me. You did nothing. I did all of the work, and I realized, I said, you know what? I'm not doing anybody else's work. I'm doing it for me from well, here on out. Part of that is, like, what did you negotiate? Did you have any sort of agreement with them where it's like, if you're doing all the work, then you should, A, retain the rights for your artwork or something, where it's like, you could you could print it once, and that's it. If you want to print anything else, then you got to fork over your cash or something. something oh, yeah, no, no, no. I, it's not even about that. Like, the money-wise, the deal was great. Like, I got no problem with the deal. I, I'm working on book two, and then there's a book three, and it works. All of that's great. But it's the fact that I did all of that. I didn't really need her. She needed me. Like, the story, eh, right? <laughs> the art is what's selling the book. Nobody's like, oh, this is a beautiful story, but the art is terrible. That doesn't happen. People look at the art and go, I'd like to see what this book is about. And... I realize, like, I'm better off just saying I'll struggle for a few months and do my own thing and then be able to sell my own artwork. Yep. And that's the reality of being mm -hmm. an independent artist. It's like, look, I'll struggle for a little while, but I'll have all of the power in the end. And the older I get and the more that I work as a freelance artist, the more I'm realizing that's what the goal should be. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I think it's – you're. I think you're like me or it's like you've kind of taken the long way around. Like, I've worked – so long in production and doing stuff for everybody else and built a career doing that where it's like now it's, it's I, like I want to do my work and kind of just stick with that and try and see if anything comes out of that where I yeah. think if I if I did that when I was like 20 then who knows by now like maybe I would have 
sold some sort of property or like uh, whatever, you know. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'd and have a plenty of made a movie out or something. I don't, and there's plenty of times where, uh, as the artist, you can go into it and say, okay, yeah, I'll do the artwork. I've I've actually done this a couple times. Um, for example, uh, there was this company that a high school friend of mine wanted to start. He needed some work done. Uh, and instead of just taking all cash, I said, I'll take some cash, but then I'll take part of the company too, So, or a percentage. So like for, for Tyrus's situation, something similar to that, let's say there's an artist out there, let's say there's an illustrator out there who's about to do the work on this, uh, on this children's book. You can go into negotiations thinking, okay, I'll do the artwork, I'll take some cash, but I need 10% of the profits. And then that way you still have a stake in, in what's happening. Um, but if you go into negotiations and you say, yeah, I'm just going to take this lump sum and then, and then you're off and running, I mean, it is what it is. You got paid. That was the agreement. Yeah, it's, um, that's, that's the thing. Is like, are, like, are you thinking about these things when you're working on stuff? Because even being a teacher, like, Students, you, you never learn this stuff in, in college. Like they don't teach you like, right, yeah. hey, because you're a student, everybody's going to try and take advantage of you. Like, hey, I need this logo design. I need this. Make me some characters. Do a comic for me. Whatever it might be, you know. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing, you know. Even professionals have this too. Like at C two E two, I sat next to Tony Moore from Walking Dead, uh, artist on Walking Dead, and chatting with him. You know, he ran into a lawsuit with his friend, who co-creator, because of. At that point, you know, it's like, whatever, AMC picked it up, it's this whole Hollywood thing, and then there's, like, these little nuances, like, oh, well, who created this character? It's like, well, I did, but money's involved now, but that was never discussed while they were buddies just making a comic. It's mm-hmm. like, now it's a legal thing, you know, and so they're in court, like, of course, it's probably, I'm sure, millions of dollars or something like that, but wow. um, but it's like those types of things where, that's why I was kind of stressed to students or younger people starting out, where... Like, you have to think about these things. Like, if they're not going to pay you, then, like, own the right for all your artwork and own the IP that you're working on, and you license it. Say, hey, fine, I'll do the art. You don't have to pay me. I will I want royalties of the thing that you're making for the first run or something. And then if you're going to reprint it or reuse the art, then we renegotiate. Like, those types of things. Where something where you kind of give yourself a buffer. Where, like, you're helping them out, but you're, you want you want protection for your work. Those cases were like, oh, it hits big, whatever, gets picked up by Warner Brothers, and then they turn it into a movie, and you're like, oh, well, I, I made $50 on it just to help my friend out, you know. And that's what happens all the time, you know. Lots yeah. of, lots people, of don't have, people don't ever understand that whether you're freelance or whether you work for work for a company or whatever, when you, when you get hired on or when you when you get picked, you know, to work for someone or get hired on and be working for yourself, it's always a conversation um, in negotiations. It's never like black and white, you know, because yeah. they want something from you and you want something from them. And um, I've heard this many of times where, you know, even coming up at all the different places, I've been fortunate enough at all the different places I've worked at that I've always negotiated, you know, and Father taught me that very early on, but so many artists don't do it, right? Even at places that people think are less than desirable. I've never had a problem in terms of in terms of money because it's a conversation. And like artists a lot of times just say, Oh, well I just took the they I just took the offer. Uh and right. whatever they put on there, they I said yes. You know, like you know, everything, have to, have everything is negotiable. You can you can negotiate vacation time. You can negotiate you can negotiate pretty much anything. Except, like, if you're going into a video game company, you can't negotiate a percentage off of the profits. Yeah, of course. You could try. Don't tell but Brian. Probably, yeah. <laughs> Don't tell Brian. Now. What's that guy's name, Brian? I would never do that because I'd be only yeah. money, I think. <laughs> but yeah. but, but it's always for, for those yeah. artists that are working on the smaller projects, like a children's book or something, let's say, a, let's say an author reaches out to you and says, I really like your work. Let's work together. And then you say... Uh, you know, you go into negotiations and you say you want a percentage, and then if they say, "Whoa, whoa, whoa, I don't want you to take," your 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 rebuttal to all of their hesitations and stuff 
you can say, I don't need that much money up front because I'm investing in my work and the better I do, the better the book does and the more money everyone makes. Whereas if you just give me a lump sum, it's going to be done, but I... Well, you don't want to say that. Yeah. I don't really feel. Well, it's, it, no, it just depends on how you want to approach it. You know, it's like you, if you just need the paycheck, and you just do the work. You don't care about it. Fine. It's like give me the money, I'll do the work. Right. I'm a professional. That's just a job. Or if you're helping somebody out, or they don't have a lot of money, then it's like you need to, and you want to do the project, or you're passionate about that project, mm -hmm. then and have that conversation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. With that said. Dave Punk, if people want to see your passion project, uh, where would so they, where would they be able to, to find it? You go to robot-envy.com, and then from there there's lots of uh, social network links. So we're on Facebook as well. We're on Tumblr and Twitter, uh, Instagram, and my website is davepunk.com, D-A-V-P-U-N-K.com. And, uh, yeah, and so Robot Envy Zenith, Will be coming out probably in the early, early winter, late fallish. Um, it's going to be published by magnetic published by Magnetic Press, and um, yeah, we'll also have a release party at Roto Fuji here in Chicago. So awesome! Yeah, we're we'll looking we'll forward to that. I'm going we'll to see all you guys. Invite. Yeah, VIP. <laughs> Everyone's coming. V VIP, please for me. Thanks. Yes. I got your. I know. Me. I know. I got my book coming, and and I'm excited about it. Yeah, yeah. A lot of cool stuff. I'm really excited about it. It's gonna be cool. Yeah, it's gonna be cool. Happy to get it done too. Get it out to everyone. Cool. Thanks for being on the show, Dave. Thank you for having me. Thanks, Dave. Awesome. Charlie B. Williams. If people are looking for yeah. you, where can they find you? Um, my my, my website is cargocollective.com slash Charlie B. Williams. You can catch me on. My Facebook page is uh, facebook.com slash charliebw3. And then also, um, yeah, there's also that little thing called Pinterest, which is pinterest.com slash charliebw3. Um, but, yeah, and Twitter, cbw3. And Tyrus Gaucher, if people yeah, want to see the disgust on your face. <laughs> You can find me at tigosketch.com on Facebook at Tigo Sketch, Instagram at Tigo Sketch. Uh, yeah, that's it. There you go. <laughs> a lot of links. And I'm Carlos Gomez. You can find me at carlosrgomez.com or you can find me on Twitter, uh, Facebook, and Instagram at Coconut Justice. This has been the Sketch Zone podcast. You can go to sketch.zone, submit artwork, and you can come hang out with us. If you're on Twitter, you can find us at sketchzone, facebook.com slash the sketch zone, youtube.com slash sketch zone podcast. And you can find us on Stitcher, SoundCloud, and iTunes when you're on iTunes. Go ahead and subscribe, leave some feedback, give us those five stars, and let people know what you think about the show and help them find it too. And go ahead and share all this goodness. You know you want to. Share the love. Share. That's it for us, my friends. Have a wonderful week. Yep. Take care. See you next Bye week. Bye, guys. Thanks again. All right. See you later, buddy. Let's go get some.